Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe we are on the air. Yeah. Yep. Are we all on the air? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad yeah. Georgia's on your mind. Let's go. We're in the state of Georgia. Praise the Lord. We welcome everybody in the city of Uncle Atlanta. Sorry, Atlanta. No, no, this is One thing Atlanta. I didn't do. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have to understand, I've had a little bit of a head start here on everybody. Maybe not everybody, but we've had a bit of a head start here in the Spirit of the Lord. We are going to have ourselves an amazing service tonight. We are actually in the city of Stockbridge, just south of the main city of Atlanta. We welcome everybody who's watching us by Facebook. Praise God. Some more people still coming in. We're so happy to see you. Have you with us. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to ask everybody just to stand with me. We're going to welcome the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to God forevermore. As more people coming in. We're so happy to see you. Praise God. Yeah. Some of you haven't seen you for a long, long time. And we're just so happy to have you here. We have more seats. Just come on over to this side. There's plenty of seats on this side of the building. Praise God. Or just we'll move you right up here. Praise God. People finding seats. We are going to have an awesome service tonight. Thank you, Lord. We're going to talk about the great awesome things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, um, we're not in the church tonight. We're here at a hotel room. And uh, you're free to say... Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, oh my, Woo. glory to God, hallelujah, you're free to jump up and down and shout, that's it, you can even preach a little bit, hallelujah, <laughs> thank you Lord, look, we ask you right now for total freedom and liberty in this house, oh. we bind every D, 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 or D, every dumb dog of a devil, of a demon, that poke his nose in this door, wrong room, Positively. Thank you. Wrong facility. Positively. Yeah. Get out of here. Uh, Father, we break in Jesus' name. Yeah. Every work or effect or pain or result of the work of the enemy against God's people. We speak liberty, life, blessing, anointing, freedom, joy, peace, and abundance in your Holy Spirit for yeah. every person in this house tonight. Yeah. We declare this and we say this and we vow as we stand before your throne. You will not leave the same. Amen. And this is not a cliche. Amen. This is real. This is, a, just, this is not just a rhyme. You will not leave the same in Jesus' name. Sequel name. Male or dame. You won't leave the same in Jesus' name. And it's not just a rhyme. It's the truth in Jesus' name. Now, Spirit of the Lord, we welcome you here on behalf of our precious Lord Jesus. Yeah. Who is seated with Father in heaven at the right hand of Father God. And Lord, we welcome you. And we say right now, we're going to say and do everything tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Mm. By and through God's Holy Spirit. Yes. To the glory of our Father God yes. in heaven, yes. sitting on the throne. Jesus seated at his right hand. Yeah. And Holy Spirit who is omnipresent in heaven and the earth everywhere. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank we you, speak Lord. life and healing and blessing over everybody. Yeah. Yes, and we say, if yes. the same Spirit, which it is, yes. that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, yes. which He does, yes. because everybody here tonight is a believer. Thank you. you know, there's nothing wrong with believers' meetings. We do need them also. Hallelujah. Thank God for evangelism and winning souls, but we need to have some good, strong believers' meetings sometimes. And so we're having one tonight. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. So, precious Holy Spirit, yes. take control Hallelujah. and let us roll. Let's go. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you. Woo, Lord God. Take charge. Jesus. And let us march. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. All right. Just yeah. raise your hands. We're not having worship tonight. I'm sorry about that, but. Just raise your hands and shout. Let's just worship the Lord for a minute. Amen. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory, Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Thank you
Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, man. Come to this place for this moment. Yes. And we know, we believe, hallelujah, hallelujah. that over a thousand yes. people are going to watch this in the end. Yes. Praise God, hallelujah. hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. And now we release Thank your anointing, you. Lord, and your presence hallelujah. by your spirit you. for the broadcast yes, on Thank that you, camera. We put it on that broadcast right now. Yes. No matter what time Thank people you. watch it, 5 yes. o'clock in the afternoon, you, 4 o'clock a.m., okay. midnight, whatever, yeah. you're going to hit them, Spirit of God, with your power, your grace, and your presence. You're going to fall on them and change them forever. In Jesus' name, visit them right there in their home in front of that computer in the precious name of Jesus. And for our live audience right now, we thank you that your anointing extends from this house right to them in the precious, glorious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you may be seated if you cannot be defeated. Somebody said to me one time, what if I can be defeated? I said, well, run up here. God will change it quickly before we start the service. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Here, my precious, sweet, wonderful, God bless you. Precious wife, Shelly. My co-minister, preacher, helper, teacher, Bible, teacher, book writer. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. I tell you, I'm just... <laughs> I, <laughs> woo, hallelujah. Yeah, I have to excuse me. I'm a little out of it because I'm all into it. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> it be out of it in the natural, but into it with the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. Woo, glory. I just sat there in the hotel room this afternoon. The Lord told me something, and I, I tell you what, I've never recovered from what He told me this afternoon. Hallelujah. No. But I think I'm going to remain unrecovered. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise God, honey. You want to yeah. greet everybody? Say hello. Praise God. Praise hello, everybody. Hello. hello. It is so good to be here in Atlanta, Stockbridge yeah. area. Oh, my goodness. I am so excited about what Holy Spirit is up to. Oh, Amen. my gosh. We are living in the last days. Glory yeah. yeah. to God. He has his golden glory revolution. Mm. God has his golden glory revolution on the brink of explosion. I'm so excited about that. Yes. Holy Spirit is absolutely everything. Amen. He yes. is absolutely, He is God on this earth. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He was sent after Jesus went back to heaven. Jesus sent Holy Spirit, God Holy Spirit, yes. to us to Amen. live inside of each and every one of us who are born again. Yes. Holy Spirit lives in us yes. as born again believers, born again spirit filled by Holy Spirit. Believers, and that is where his throne is. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. The Lord showed that to Gabriel a, a, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. That that is whole, our, our spirits is the throne of Holy Spirit yeah. in Amen. each individual person, mm -hmm. and that just blessed me so much. It's like, oh my God! So Father God has His throne in heaven. Lord Jesus Christ has His throne at the right side of the Father, yeah. and Holy Spirit. God, Holy Spirit, has his throne right inside of each and every yeah. born again believer. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, God, I mean, God, Holy Spirit, absolutely governs on this earth. He is God on, in the earth. Yeah. And it just blesses me to know he is. I'm so ecstatic about that. I'm so ecstatic about that. Yes. 
I can't wait to see what Holy Spirit is going to do tonight in this meeting. Absolutely. Every meeting that we are doing since we have released God's Golden Glory Revolution book is God's book. He said, get my book out to my people. He said, get my book out to my people because this is the last day message that God, Holy Spirit, wants to get across the earth for these last days. So his revolution is coming. He is preparing week, day by day and week by week, preparing his remnant. We are the remnant. Whoever is hungry enough for God and really wants to be on the front lines of God's army in these last days, that is remnant. Do you qualify? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Do you qualify? Do you have the hunger? Yeah. Do you have the hunger to be one of the front line soldiers in the army of God yeah. in these last days? Mm. I know I do. Yeah. I want to be right there in the front. I want to be right there in the front. Right. With my, I just want to. Mm. I just, I, I just yeah. want to be right there in the front on the front lines, charging toward God. Amen. Charging yeah. toward, toward, toward the Lord. Come on. With the with a ferocious hunger. Wow. That's what I and that's what I ask Holy Spirit for all the time is Lord give me more hunger. Give me yeah. more hunger for yeah. you. Just yeah. give me more hunger yes. for you. Yes. Make yes. me yes. ravenous in my spirit. Yes. Ravenously hungry yes. for you, God. Yes. Come on. And I think that should be all of our prayers yes. daily. It's because we're in we're in such a critical time now. Truly, 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 we are the last generation. Yes. We are the last generation before the return of Jesus. So we have to prepare ourselves. And the only way we can really prepare ourselves for this kind of revolution is by the Spirit of God and asking Him just to do it in us. Come on. Just to do it in us. Amen. Okay, come on. You want to go? I'm done. Hallelujah. Amen. One of these days, Holy Ghost is going to hit us so hard, she's going to preach two hours like in the night. Oh, hallelujah. All right, praise the Lord. If you have a Bible with you tonight, um, let's, uh, would you turn with me, please, uh, to the book of Evie Science. You know, see, God's into science, you know? So he's got a book called Evie Science. That's Ephesians. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 9 and 10. I want to speak to you for the next six hours concerning uh, minus four hours. Now I have a very provocative title to my message tonight. Be neither discouraged nor angry when you hear the title. Because I'll qualify it, then we'll turn it around. My title is this, God is a failure. I'm going to say some things that will illustrate the point, and then from there we'll flip it around, and then we go to hallelujah, shout and scream and rejoice, get wild, drunk, and Holy Ghost time. Amen. Okay? Yes. But I'm going to show you something tonight of how great God is, Amen. and how ungreat I am. Let's go. And you. Yep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, you see, there's a lot of humanism in the church. Right. Come on. In God's fire, of course, going to burn up all this BJB. You know what BJB is? It's bunk, junk, and baloney. Of course, you know. Uh, I had to learn when I came to America to speak America. Uh, right, you go to the YMCA, switch on the TV, watch the NCAA on ESPN, or ABC, or CBS, or Communist News Network. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't watch Communist News Network, do you? All right, so let me say this. I said to the Lord even last week, what is your description of humanism in the church? He said, man playing God. Amen. Now the world does not agree with the church, good or bad. The world says there is no God. Yeah. Or God is dead. But the church at large, not us, but the church at large says God is a failure. So if I don't bail out God, we're all going down with the ship. Mm. 
us and God together. Hello? Did you know that God needs you? Did you know that God needs you? Now come on now, they'll tell you all the time in church, God needs you. Come on now, somebody. I tell you what, many, many years ago, I was already in the ministry about 10, 15 years. The Lord said to me one day, he said, I don't need you. <laughs> he said, I love you. I called you from before the foundation of the world. I saved you. I redeemed you. I prospered you. I blessed you. I brought you into my kingdom. You're in the church. You're part of the church, the body of Christ. And I called you to my ministry. But I don't need you. Right. News flash. He said, I have included all that I've ever created to come into my kingdom. And by choice, they come and they are born again. And I utilized and wish to utilize the whole body of Christ and have everybody involved in the work of my kingdom one way or the other. But I don't need you. I do this because I love you. And I do this because I don't like to do anything by myself since I created that. No, 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 you don't get that one. No, no. Okay, we're going to have to put some skis on the ride this one over there. The Lord said to me one time, He said, There's so many things I can do all the time, anytime I want to. But I want you, that's us, the church, to be involved. Yeah. Well, because that's where the fun is. Yeah. There's no fun in me doing it by myself. Yeah. Okay. I've done it for ages and ages and ages in the past before I created you. But since I created you, I don't want to do anything by myself anymore. There's no fun in it. Yeah. The fun is in us working together. Yeah. Yeah. The fun is in you being involved with me and I being involved with you. And we become partners and we do it all together. That's where the fun and the enjoyment is for me. Amen. And that's where the blessing is for you. Yeah. Amen. Okay, okay. That must, that must have been better. Yeah, okay, all right, okay. Now, now, now. I want to explain what I'm saying to you because there's so much humanism in the church world. We're going to shoot, we're going to shoot this. I mean, we're in Georgia. Where's the shotguns? Come on. We're going to blow, blow holes into this tonight. Listen, God, hallelujah. All right, now, here's the first thing, you know. I have three points here. Real homiletical sermon. Number one, unless you pray, unless you pray, nothing's going to happen. Excuse me? Cool. This will be told all the time. Unless you pray, nothing's going to happen. Unless you pray, God cannot do anything. Really. Do you know that before we lived on this earth, there was a creation here billions of years ago, a creation that was here before man. It's called the pre adamic creation. God gave that kingdom to Lucifer. Yeah. That's when he was Lucifer. Yeah. Please don't call him Lucifer. He's not Lucifer anymore. Lucifer was the anointed cherub angel that covers. But Lucifer, Lucifer, now he's ugly and naked and, 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 and fulfills it. He's no longer Lucifer. He's a devil, Diablo. TBM, the bad man who thinks he's something. But there was a war. There was a war that took place because the devil on the earth... He said, you know, I, I want to overthrow God. He's real smart, you know. I, I'm going to overthrow God. Anybody want to help me? So he got together all of the creatures on the earth and ascended into heaven. And of course, one third of the angels in the beginning were placed under his authority. So they helped him. And so now he's going to overthrow God. Uh, but you see, there must have been people praying and interceding at that time. And so, so, so God and, 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 and He's the Lord and His angels could gain the victory. Did you pray? No. Did you need to see for that war that God would win? No. Hello? That's right. Oh. You're quiet in here tonight. We're gonna, we didn't get wild here. We're not in church. We didn't get wild, praise God. No? Where were you when God created the heavens and the earth? Where were you when God created the earth? Where was I when God created the earth? Where were we when He created all things? Hello? 
Praise God, some wonderful people walk in. Hallelujah. Amen. What a surprise. He drove several hours. You know, this is what blows me away. People that are hungry, like these people over here, drove four hours from Tennessee to be here. They drove like three plus, close to four, just to be here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Because this is a special meeting. You're not just here in a good meeting tonight. You're here by, you're here by divine appointment. Amen. And the same anointing is extended under that camera. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome. So glad to see you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Where were you when God created the earth? Did you pray? Come on. No. No. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, help me, brother, too, says he's upholding all things by the word of his power. Yeah. Are you praying every day that he'll be able to continue to uphold all things by the word of his power? No. Hello? Wow. You see, here's my first point tonight. Why the church says God's a failure. Unless you pray, God can do nothing. Really? Really? Hello? I'll tell you what, Brother Ron. You and I have spent a lot of good time together in the past. I'm just going to come over to your house early in the morning. I'm going to wake you up at 4 a.m. tomorrow. And then you and I go into prayer and intercession that by 5.30 or 6 o'clock, whatever time is supposed to be, that the sun would rise. If we do not pray and intercede, the sun may not rise. Did some of you get up this morning to pray this, that the sun would rise? No. Well, somebody must have done so because if they hadn't, the sun would not have risen this morning. Come on now. Amen. You think it's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Did you find Ephesians chapter 1? Yep. Verses 9 and 10. I'm going to read, uh, and I'm reading from the Amplified AMPC translation. I'm, I'm going to read just... Verse 9 and then the first part of verse 9 and then the first part of verse 10. It says this, Amplified Bible, AMPC says, Making known to us. Oh my God, hallelujah. Oh, the anointing right there. I think I preach on this three hours and I just have to be careful. We've got to be out here by 10 o'clock now. Now, making known to us. Yeah. Making known to us. Not the world, not the devil. Making known to us. Oh, thank you. Lord. I'm going to start kicking crazy. Wow. Thank you. Making known to us. Amen. Wendy? Me. Making known to us. Yeah. Yeah. His beloved, the church, you yeah. and me. Yeah. Making Hallelujah. known to us. Lord. What? Thank what? you. The mystery. Mm. Yeah. It says in brackets, I'm using AMPC translation. The secret, in brackets, the secret of His will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, I can camp here for a while. Making known to us the mystery. Why is it a mystery? Because nobody knows it. That's right. At one time, only God knew it. Wow. But there's going to come a time when He's going to unfold this mystery. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to open this thing up and reveal it to us. He's going to open wide and say, come my church, look. Yeah. Here's what I got for you. Amen. Here's what I prepared for you. Yes. Here's what I made ready for you. Let me show you. It's a mystery because God doesn't want no devil or demon to poke his face into it, <laughs> stick his nose into it. He wants no person in the world to know about it because it's not for them. Until they get born again, it's not for them. That's right. And it's never for the devil. It's not intended for him. Never. Never, never, ever, never, ever. Making known to us the mystery, the secret of His will. People say, well, you know, you never know what God's will is. Well, here we know. We're going to find out now what it is. We're going to find out what His will is here. Well, what's the will of God? But here it is. Let's look at it right now. Making known to us the mystery, the secret of His will. What is that? Of His plan and of His purpose. Yeah. He's going to show you God's will regarding what? His plan and His purpose. Somebody say plan. plan. How about purpose? purpose. Okay. Right. He's going to make known to us the secret, the mystery, the hidden revelation of His will regarding His plan and His purpose. This plan and this purpose is His will. You don't have to pray 
Like you controlled by some dumb religious devil, say, Lord, is this your will? I'm going to tell you right there. This is, going to be, this is his will. What we're about to talk about is his will. Make it known to us, his will. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, now we skip to the next verse. I'm with the same AMPC translation. He planned. Making known to us the mystery, the secret of his will, of his plan, and of his purpose. Next verse. He planned. God doesn't wake up tomorrow and say, oh my, what shall I do? <laughs> God doesn't wake up, he never goes to sleep. Right. Oh. God doesn't wake up tomorrow because it's always morning. Or next morning, it's always morning where he is. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so God doesn't wake up and say, well, I wonder what kind of plan I'm going to have. For no, 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 no. He planned. Yeah. Yes. He planned from the day this past. Yeah. From the time before time. Amen. He planned from the past. Of the ages of the past. He planned in the dateless eternal past. He planned all the way until the eternal future. That's right. He planned the eternal future from the dateless past. Long before there was time or any creation. That's right. <laughs> you know what that means? Isaiah 46.10 says, talking about God. Let's talk about God now. Remember about planning now, okay? Planning. He declared and established the end from before the beginning. Yeah. All right, so, so there's the beginning, there's the end. Yeah. So what did God do? He went down this way. Mm -hmm. All the way to the end. Then he said, okay, here's how I want the end to be. Then he created the end. And eternity. Eternity is behind this wall. Created that all. <laughs> then he said, okay, now let me lay out the plan from the end. To the beginning. So he laid out the plan from the end all the way back to the beginning, all the way over here, and to the beginning, and then he got to the beginning and said, hmm, that's a good plan. We're going to have this one work. Yeah. And he hit the button and said, stop. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then he made the pre -Adamic. Then he destroyed it when Lucifer tried to take over his kingdom. Amen. Then billions of years passed while the earth was dark and void. Yeah. Then he cleaned it up again, made a new creation, created Adam and Eve, put them on the earth. And so time began to move. Now we're 6,000 years into that time. Yeah. We're trillions of years into the beginning when he first made the earth. That's right. Well, in actual fact, scientists right. can prove to you that the earth is at least 4.54 4, 4 billion years old. Yeah. The soil. But all of that was established before the beginning. Now here's the thing that I, I want to try and tell the devil tonight. Sometimes I think we should help him a little bit. Okay, so, so let's tell him this. God planned everything and laid it out and fixed it before he made you. Yeah. Wow. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Love it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You get it? Yes. Which means you were never included in the plan of God. Because God laid out the plan, and, and Isaiah said he not only planned it, he fulfilled it and executed it before time. Do you know that there's people in heaven, relatives, family members of you, that are in heaven right now. They're in the DVD room. It's a giant or gigantic size hall. And the angels are playing all the DVDs and they're watching and they just hit the ground all the time. OMG, 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 OMG. <laughs> you may think I'm crazy. I don't care about that. But when my, my father died in 2002, I got on the plane to fly back to South Africa. Of course, I'm from South Africa, most of you know that. And in the night, the plane was empty. I was in a 747, had four rows in the middle open to myself. I laid down, I fell asleep, and I had a dream, and I, I, I was transported in the spirit in the dream. And I was hovering above the heavens. It was my spirit. My body was sleeping in the plane. You know, because your spirit can see thousands of miles far. And I was, I was not in heaven, I was way back, but I was elevated, and I was looking down into heaven, and I saw Jesus standing talking to my dad. And he looked exactly like he looked like when he was 25. My dad was a great athlete. He ran, ran hurdles. 
He kept the South African record for 16 years. He was good. He was really good. Place. And he looked like when he was a hurdles runner. And I recognized him. And Jesus is talking to him. Then Jesus tapped him on the shoulder and they walked off. And as they walked off, it's almost like you, you know, you, you, you zoomed in on the camera. I'm, I'm, I'm still way out here, but I'm zooming in. I see what's happening. And they're walking into this huge mansion. God, was a house and a half. It's two and a half, ten and a half. <laughs> and they walk inside. And, and then next thing I can see through the walls. And they're inside and there is a theater area that's round. I don't know how many of you have ever been to Epcot Center in Orlando. In one of the, the exhibitions there is the China Hall. And if you've ever seen it, it's, you walk in, it's like a screen all the way around. And things just pop up and you just keep on looking around. And it's in a very similar type room. And I cannot hear what they're saying. And I cannot see what they're seeing. But the next thing, my father, and remember, he's in spirit. He's not in body anymore. And yet the power of God so great, he keeps falling down. He looks up, look at the screen, falls down. Jesus picks him up. Wow. Then another scene comes up here, and he looks and falls down. Jesus picks him up. Then another one, they went all the way around the room. Jesus must have picked him up 20 to 30 times just in a short space of time. And then I heard the Lord's voice. I, I, I said this, I said, I wonder what he's looking at. Then I heard the Lord's voice and he said, your destiny. If it could be told you today how great God's destiny is for you these last days, if I would prophesy over you, you'd say, that Gabriel has finally become a false prophet. He used to be good until now. <laughs> he would shake your head and say, you know, don't, don't even talk this kind of garbage to me. I mean, what you said is not even possible for anybody. Come on. Destiny. Yeah. Wow. Now look at that verse again real quick, then we move on. It says this. It says, make it known to us. Yeah. The mystery. The secret, Ephesians 1 9. The secret of his will, which is what? Which what? His plan and his purpose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. His plan and his purpose for us. His plan and his purpose for us, even today. Glory to God forevermore. He's planned his purpose. Then verse 10. He planned. Verse 10. He planned. He planned. For the maturing of the time and the climax of the ages. What's the plan? The plan is to reconcile or bring together all things in Christ of all that is within heaven and all that is in the earth. That's called the rapture. So it is God's will to have a specific plan. Yes. It is God's will that this plan will accomplish His purpose. Now, you do not hear much of that in the church today. Now, let me give you this example. Let's say some kind of meteor is coming straight towards the earth. And the thing is about five times the size of the planet. And it's going to hit us. And according to the scientists, there's only one place you'll be safe. And that is in Juneau, Alaska. Do you know? Only in Juneau. Do you know? So, I tell you what, I, I don't like Alaska. Please not think it's, it's too cold for me. I'm allergic to cold. I'm allergic to onions, cold, and the devil. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, they're all from the devil. <laughs> when people end up in hell for eternity, that's when hell freezes out. It's cold. <laughs> so now, you have three months to get to Juneau, Alaska. You gotta tell everybody. Juneau. Juneau, Juneau, Juneau. You got to get to Juneau in three months. 
Well, that meteor was going to hit. And then they have scientists that prove this thing. It's in every country. It's on every television station. It's on morning, noon, and night. And guess what? People are beginning to fly to, you know, you know, you know. Because, you know, we want to live. We want to survive. Now, in the beginning, there will be people say, oh, it's a joke, it's garbage. It's a... But eventually, people are going to get serious. Finally, people are going to see that light in the sky when it's about three weeks ago, and it's going to hit. And finally, the penny is going to drop. I have got to get out of here, and somehow we'll get to Juno. They may turn every airline plane that way and get people on, and we get to Juno. But I will guarantee you this, that for three months, this is the main news of the day. This may be the only news of the day. You're going to hear at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock. You're going to hear it on every network, every station, every country, every nation, every television world, every language, every creed, every newspaper, every magazine. Go to Juno. Survive. And we're going to prepare. We're going to put all our stuff in storage. We're going to build stuff on the ground. Get the furniture in there. Level it up. And, and do everything we can. And we're getting out of there. We're going to Juno. And I'm telling you, I don't like the cold weather in Juno, but I'm going because I want to survive. And people believe the bad news, what is coming to pass, and they act on it. More than it, they talk about it 24-7. They never stop. God has got a plan. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good news because you don't have to go to Juno. Amen. You know? You don't have to go to Juno. God's plan is a good one. Now God's got a meteor too that's going to hit the earth. But it's a good meteor. It's a glorious one. It's coming as sure as I'm standing here today by the grace of God. It's coming. It's coming as sure as you're sitting in this house tonight. Whether people like it or not, believe it or not, preach it or not, pray for it or not, whatever. Whether the church pays any attention to it, God's meteor is on its way to you. It ain't going to kill you. It is going to give you life and fire and power and redemption and salvation and blessing and wealth and power and healing and miracles and signs and wonders that like you could not even believe, even if you could try. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Come on in, just grab some seats. So glad to have you. Thank you. Praise God. I love it. Still some more people coming in. Come on in, y'all. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. God's meteor of fire is on its way. It has already left heaven. It is on its way to the earth. Like it or not, believe it or not, know it or not, pray for it or not. Pray for not, it's got absolutely zilts, nothing to do with it. It's coming, it's on its way. It's not going to destroy, it's going to revolutionize. Yeah. It's not going to destroy, it's going to transform the earth. Yeah. It's going to transform this whole planet. It's going to heat the whole planet, set this whole thing on fire. Yeah. God knows it and rejoices. The devil knows it and vomits in a bucket every day in hell. The church knows nothing and sleeps on because the church says God is a failure. So the church says God's a failure because God's plans are not going to work. God's plan of the ages, the, 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 the climax of God's plan of the ages, the end time outpouring of the Spirit, the last day revival, the final harvest, the coming together of billions of people from around the earth, yeah. it's not going to happen because God's a failure. How do you know that? How do you know that's how the church believes? Because that they never preach about it. They never talk about it. It's never on the news. Nobody says a word. Nobody says a word. Nobody says a word. Well, I will. I may be the only one. I'm going to tell you this. Get ready. Doesn't matter whether your name is Freddy, Eddie, or Teddy. Get ready. I'm telling you, the fire of God's coming. The fireball is coming. God's glorious meteor of fire is on its way. It is coming through the sky. Even as we're talking right now, you can believe it or not. Like I say, like it or not, don't know what it's about. I'm telling you, it's coming. And it's going to hit you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm telling you, you've got flesh. You're going to get the fire. The meteor is going to hit you. Bless it, big God. It's going to hit. It's about to hit 7.7 .7 billion people. And wake up the sleepy dead in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Woo. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
bless you, Lord. But you know, buddy, God must be a failure. Because nobody talks about his imminent pain. Right here. Yeah. Wow. When I say nobody, I don't mean absolutely nobody. I, I'm not in every church every Sunday on the face of the earth hearing what every pastor preaches. I'm not. But the general trend of what I'm not hearing and what I'm seeing and not seeing is just horrible. It's just terrible. Yes. It's the, they talk about everything, about you know this and that and the other, but they don't talk about the things that are foremost on the heart of God today, which is, which is His plan and His purpose for this final hour and this last generation. You're a part of it, hallelujah. We're a part of it, and God is going to transform the church and revolutionize the world, hallelujah. His fire is on the way. Know it or not, believe it or not, like it or not, it's coming. It's going to hit you. And it's going to hit everybody. Every, all flesh. He's finally, God is finally going to fulfill the promise of the prophetic word of Joel 2, 28, Acts 2, 17. And he will pour out his spirit yeah. upon all flesh. Believe it or not, like it or not, want it or not. God, I don't believe it. Who the heck cares what you believe in? I'll never forget the day. Brother Tim, I'll never forget the day when the Lord said to me, I don't care what you believe. <laughs> he told me one day, I don't care what you believe. <laughs> but if you want my advice on it, you should talk to me some more so I can help you to tell you what you should believe. Amen. Yeah. He said, only when you believe what I believe do I care what you believe. <laughs> I don't care about your doctrines and your ideas or whatever. So I said, Lord, well, is that true? He said, yeah. I said, okay, I'll give you all my doctrines, all my ideas and stuff, and kill them all, and give me what you got. You tell me what to believe. You teach me. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you alone to moan and groan. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. And I preach on this, and people say, holy what? I say, no, Holy Spirit. Holy macro. No, no. Holy Spirit. Holy cow. No, no, no. Holy Spirit. What's that? No, 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 no. What? Who? Who? Who the hell is that? No, no, no. Hell. Heaven. He comes from heaven. Well, I've been born again, spirit filled, tongue talking, divine healing, believing, word confessing, word practicing, devil casting out, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Pentecostal, Pentecostal, charismatic, charismatic, automatic, systematic, Christian. And I've never heard anything about the Holy Spirit. We just sing songs every Sunday, you know, somewhere. In the shadows, if I, if I had a microphone, I'd have you sing this with me. Somewhere in the shadows, I'll find Jesus. Somewhere in the darkness of night. Somewhere in the early hours of the morning. Oh, somewhere in the middle of the night. Oh, everybody sing with us. Somewhere in the shadows, you'll find in the shadows. In the shadows. You've got to know shadow and turning about him. He's the light. Come on. Oh, glory to God. I'm getting excited. He's the light. Yeah. Glory to God. I said, He's the light. Yes. He's the glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Somewhere in the shadows? Come on. Somewhere in the shadows. I promise you. That's, that was an old Pentecostal song. Yeah, I promise you. I didn't make that up. <laughs> and do you remember the one Kenneth Copeland used to sing? What's the one Kenneth Copeland used to sing? Uh, sing sober and sorry. <laughs> broke, disgusted, and sad. Then you put a little tear in your voice. Start following Jesus. Lost everything I had. Now my heart is broken. Oh, I feel forsaken. <laughs> Sing sober and sorry. Oh, Jesus, I am so sad. <laughs> I tell you what, I don't think it's... I, I, we, I, we, <laughs> Kenneth Copeland used to sing that one. In the bars. In the bars yeah, and then, but then he's... Oh, oh, here's the story. He used to sing that in the bars when he was a blues singer. Way back in the early 60s. Then, of course, he got saved and filled with the Spirit of God called him. And then a few years later, he's preaching in this church. And, I mean, he, whatever he preaches, while he's preaching that night, nobody gets excited, nobody's shouting, nobody nothing. <laughs> so he grabbed the microphone, and he said, I'm going to sing this old stupid bar song. 
Just change the lyrics a little bit and put Jesus in there. And he sings, somewhere in the shadows. No, 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 no. no. Sing sober and sorry. Broke, disgusted, and sad. Stop following Jesus. Lost everything I had. And I go, yes, I can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, I meant glory. By the time he finished the first verse, everybody's on their feet. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Very emotional. <laughs> emotionalism. Religious communism. What, what do you know? <laughs> All right, we're talking tonight. My subject is this. And it may not sound so good now, but it's going to get gooder. God is a failure. Did you know that God is a failure? Well, the world tells you. No, no, not the world, the church. So if God is not a failure, and if God's plans are true and sure, and guaranteed to come to pass, how come you can't hear just about anywhere I know of, hear anybody preach about God's plan for these last days, the last day outpouring, Revival, harvest, and coming of Jesus. I, you know, I'll tell you this. Sometimes, I, sometimes I wish, I wish, that God would talk to people like He talks to me sometimes. He said, oh, that must be sweet. Many times it is. Other times it's not. I remember, I'll tell you this real quickly, when I was just newly born again. I'm sitting, I'm at Bible school, 1981. I'm sitting there just reading and studying, and suddenly it's like he tore, tore the roof open, and it's like the God put his mouth in there and screamed with a thousand loudspeakers attached to his mouth. He screamed at me. He said, Why don't you believe in my end time harvest? He screamed at me so loud. When I came to, I was 10 feet away from the bench I was sitting on, shaking, laying in the fetal position, and repenting. Don't know what for, but I don't want to die. I tell you, it was, it was, it was shocking. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray that you speak to some more Christians in such shocking way. Amen. And wake up the dead in Christ. The ones yeah. above ground, not the ones beneath ground. Above ground. Hallelujah. He screamed at me a second time. Why do you not believe in my end time hours? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know. I'm so sorry. He says, no, you believe like most of the church. I get a few here, get a few there, and a few hundred thousand. He said, I am the Lord of the harvest. He said, I am the Lord of Pentecost. I am the Lord of Shabbat, yeah. which is the Jewish harvest of Pentecost. Yeah. He said to me, you know, because I was raised that way. I know what Shabbat is. I was raised to know. Shabbat is the summer harvest of the blessing. God, has blessed, God had blessed the hands of the Jews to reap the harvest. He said, I have anointed your hands to strip the field. Hardly anything will slip through your fingers. Mm. <laughs> what does Shabbat mean? What does Pentecost mean? It means you get 95%, 90 to 95%. If you want to put a percentage to it, that means you get 90 to 95%. Then on Sunday, June the 1st, AD 32, in that upper room, when God poured out the Spirit in that upper room, He turned the Shabbat of the field to the Shabbat of the kingdom, of the harvest field of people, and the harvest of people, and the harvest of souls. The same principle still applies. Amen. There's no change to the heart of the harvest. It is still Shabbat. It is now only a spiritual Shabbat, consisting of people. People. That's why the prophet of God said, He will pour out the Spirit upon all flesh. That's yeah. coming. That's never been fulfilled. You have to understand there's a lot of things that God initiated at a certain time. But God uses time, we call it the word progressive, to unfold His plan little by little by little by little by little. He's planned 7,000 years. To bring about his entire plan for the human race from beginning to end. Mm. 
So, you know, the church says forget God's plan because God's a failure. So his plan is going to be a failure. What about the time? What about the times and the seasons of God? What about the times that God has ordained from before time? What, what about the plans of God? The times of the plans of God. What about that? You need to understand there's a reason why you've never been invited to a Bible study course or a school of learning prophetic or Bible times. The reason is because the devil doesn't want you to know about the times of God. How many of you have a wristwatch? I know you all have a phone. Do you have a wristwatch on you? Do you have it here with you, man? Man. Yes, could you just tell me what the time is, please, man? Okay, now, would you mind to take my hand for a moment and let's just pray? Would you agree with us, sir? Let's pray God would give us revelation of that. Yeah. Would you say that again, ma'am? What did you say to me? You know, the time. Eight. Okay, so now everybody help us pray. We need revelation of that. Or 751. Whatever. What, what can we agree on? <laughs> Okay, all right, she's prophetic, she's already in the future. Okay, all right, okay, okay. So, so somebody's a little less prophetic. Thank you, sir. 7.15. Now, okay, can we all stop, just pause for a moment, and pray that God would give us revelation of that? Because we don't know what the time is. I mean, 7.51, does that mean anything to anybody? It actually does, doesn't it? Do you need to pray to get revelation of what it means? 7.51. No, it's 7.51. It's 10 minutes to 8 o'clock. We're 4 minutes from midnight. So you, you understand the time. Now, the moment you call out the time, everybody here understands it. Why? Why? Because ever since you were a little child, you were taught the cycles and sequences of how natural time works. What am I talking about? There's seconds, minutes, you know, 60 seconds is a minute. 60 minutes is CBS television. Oh, excuse me, it's an hour. <laughs> then it changes from 60 minutes to 24 hours, to seven days, to four weeks, to a week, to four weeks a month. How come you know those things? Because you were taught from childhood how natural time works. You were taught the cycles of natural time. Has anybody ever offered to teach you the cycles of prophetic time or Bible time? No. No. Why not? Because the devil doesn't want you to know that. That's right. And the spirit that controls the church, his name is the Antichrist, mm. has made sure that you never got an invitation to that. Mm. Well, you got now. It's in here. Amen. Amen. The hell with the devil. Amen. Every dumb demon. Things that you've been robbed of, the church has been robbed of for years, yeah. are now made known by the Spirit, through the Spirit. He gave me a whole bunch of it right in here. Amen. We'll talk about it in a minute. So forget God's plan because God's a failure. It's not going to come to pass. Don't worry about the times. I mean, we are right now 72 years. We're in the 73rd year of what Jesus said. That's if you believe Jesus. Well, I just don't even believe Jesus so long. Jesus said, when the fig tree blossoms, speaking of Israel as a nation, yep. when Israel will be reborn as a nation, one generation will go by and I will be back. Mm. Will not even conclude, actually. Mm. You cannot find any Christian who believes that. Yeah. Except a handful. Yeah. Because if you believe that, you're going to say, wait a minute. The meteor is on its way. Now, before Jesus comes back, God's plan will come to pass. Yeah. Like it or not, believe it or not, it may go against everything we've been raised to believe, actual fact it will. Yeah. It'll destroy all the doctrines and the hogwash and the stupid, dumb doctrines that the church has taught us forever. It's not the problem with the church or the pastors. It's a problem with the spirit that has controlled the church for 2,000 years. His name is Antichrist, but God's about to burn his butt to shreds. Amen. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. 
So now because God's a failure, forget about the plan. Forget about the times and seasons. See, the last time Israel was a nation was in May of the year 606 B.C. Just before the cat came. You know the cat, the bad cat, Nebuchadnezzar. I call him the bad cat. Nebuchadnezzar came and invaded Jerusalem. Do you know that from that time, 606 B.C., until Friday, May the 14th, 1948, a period of 2,590 years, almost 3,000 years, Israel never regained statehood, sovereignty, independence. But on Friday, May the 14th, 1948, one of the most incredible things of modern time happened. One of the greatest manifestations of the prophetic came to pass. Israel was reborn, activating at that point the prophetic word of Jesus. Releasing it into the earth to begin to operate. A generation of 70 to maximum 80 years. We're 72 years tonight. We're 72 years into the last generation. And whether you believe the church, ignoring this because God's a failure, it's not going to happen. Or whether you believe Jesus, I'm telling you this. And this is not bad news. Most of this is good news. It doesn't matter what you give the church, bad news or good news. If it's true, they don't pay any attention. But soon, God will get your attention. Because he will pour thousands of buckets of liquid fire on you and burn the hell out of you and me. Amen. And transform us yeah. into a glorious instrument of his praise and of his glory. Yeah. And the devil will stand by and say, that's not fair. Those people just lost everything I haven't put in them for 6,000 years. But I, Burn out of it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Burn out of it. Burn out of it. You know what? Yeah. I just have, you just have to you just have to bear with me. It's, 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 sometimes I eat my teeth. It's frustrating. Because if you don't pray, God can do nothing. Hello? Well, let me just say this to you. Back on June the 5th, 1967, when Syria and Egypt suddenly attacked Israel, did you pray? No. Nope. Did you pray? Nope. A miracle took place in six days. Israel and God destroyed all those Arab nations that came against them. And in six days, that war was over. Israel won victorious. Did you pray? Did you fast? You must have been deceived. <laughs> Hello? You didn't? Wow, shame on you. Don't you know God can do nothing unless you pray? Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just destroy your doctrines tonight so you can be set free. That you can get ready for what God's about to bring. Amen. There's so much humanism in the church. Humanism means man, man plays God. If you don't pray, God can do nothing. Really? What happened in 1973 in Israel with the Yom Kippur War? Did you pray? Israel was about to be destroyed. Right there, early October 1973, God showed up and turned it around. Well, everyone must have prayed. It's frustrating when you know the truth. Every once in a while this happens. Man, I tell you what, I wish I could rip this stuff off Facebook. And it's, you know, some Arabs are threatening Israel again and everybody. Oh, all the church, pray fast, intercede. Oh, Israel is under a threat again. Oh, oh, because if you don't pray, God can't save Israel. You have to pray to empower God so he can do something. I mean, you got, if you don't pray, poor old God, do nothing. Oh, my God, if you don't pray, God's got no power. Come on. Bull crap. Come on. Oh, man. Ooh. Yeah. Hogwash. Now here's another one. The next one is going to be tougher. Unless you preach. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Then we take the calling of God and we turn that into some kind of possession. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. We own the souls. If we don't preach, they don't get saved. Really? Really? 
Then there's people who make soul money an obsession. They never talk to God. They never fellowship with Holy Spirit. They never walk with God. They never spend time with the Lord. They never do anything but run, run, try to get everybody saved. Whether they're ready or not, they attack everybody in the street. <laughs> 99% of the people that you want to win for the Lord with your demon-controlled possession are not ready to be saved. That's right. That's right. But to get them off your back, they'll say the sinner's prayer, yeah. but it doesn't come from the heart. Wow. Yeah. So much humanism and control of man in the church. Unless you preach, nobody can hear the gospel. Nobody can be saved. No salvations, no harvest, really. I'll tell you this real quickly since I only have a little bit more time. In Charleston, South Carolina, there was a man one time and he was working on a building. They four stories up and the building blew up. An explosion blew him through the wall, through the, through the window. Four stories down, he hit the ground. The man went to, to a coma. He's not saved. His wife's not saved. She gets saved. She's sitting day and night by his bedside praying that he would, would survive. And, and she said, Lord, even if he has to die... Bring him out of this, that I can lead him to salvation, then he can die and go to heaven. So three months later, he came out of the coma. And his wife said, I've been praying for I get my heart to Jesus. I'm a born again Christian. I've been praying all this time for you that you be saved. And he opens his mouth and starts praying in tongues. Well, it had to be demonic tongues, but he's not saved, right? Are you kidding me? He's in that coma and Jesus walked up to him in that coma and said, I am the Lord of life. Accept my salvation and you will live. You are a spirit. You are not a meathead. You are not a meat body. You are a spirit. God appeared to him in his spirit man. And he received Jesus. God filled him with the Holy Spirit. By the time his mind and his body came out of the coma, he's speaking in other tongues. But no. No, no, no. Yeah. Unless you preach the gospel, nobody can get saved. Who mm -hmm. What about that story? All of you heard about that Muslim guy that saw the Lord in a dream. He's an evangelist preaching all over the world. Hardline, hardcore Muslim. Jesus appeared to him in a dream and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the Christ. Yeah. In a dream. Yeah. He got gloriously saved and filled with the Spirit. Who preached to him? Come on. Jesus. Let's go. Oh, unless we preach the gospel, nobody can get saved. Hello? What about, what about Brother Saul on his way to Damascus? Well, we're from Florida. Actual fact, our governor demasked us. He took our, he took our masks away. Hallelujah. We're free already. It's not mandatory, it's not woman either. Anybody. Saul on his way to Damascus. Saul hated the church. Yeah. With a passion. If he had a shotgun, if he was a Georgia country boy, he'd have two shotguns on the back of that truck and come down the street. He's ready to go shoot some Christians at Damascus. Really? Uh, yeah. For God will never go against your will. Really? Uh, yeah. All right. you know, you've got a free will. God will never go against your will. Really? Go tell Saul, who's Paul. You get to heaven, go tell him that. <laughs> All the junk they've preached. You have, I, I asked the Lord about it. How does that work? He says, you have a free will as long as it does not go against my plan with your life and other people's lives that you will affect. Then you lose your free will. Hello? Uh, you, have, you have a free will as long as your free will does not contradict God's divine plan and purpose for your life Amen. or for others who depends on you because if you're able to do it you cause them to miss out on God miss out on salvation no sir no sir your free will is a very narrow lane go ask this of Saul who's now Paul he's on his way to Damascus to arrest those Christians the Lord came in the middle of the desert knocked him off his high horse and said hey you're fighting against me he didn't say, well, I'll tell you what the hell, give me a shot, come out, give them too, Jesus. <laughs> no, he was overpowered, uh, to say the least. Who are you, Jesus? What can I do for you? Go to the Gentiles, preach the gospel, and bring them to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Hello? Yeah. So many people that have never been hit by the power of God. The power of God hits you. First time you can talk, maybe five minutes or five hours, you're going to say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. How can I do for you? What can I do for you? Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yeah, yeah. Shaking and trembling. Hallelujah. In fear and in joy. Fear, oh my God. His power is the great joy. Oh my God. God showed up in my miserable life. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory yeah. to God. Hallelujah. Set me yeah. free. Come on. Unless you pray, God can do nothing. Hogwash. Bullcrap. Unless you preach, nobody gets saved. Hogwash. Bullcrap. I'm going go on in this all night long. And so you see the church said, because God is a failure. If we don't pray, nobody gets saved. Uh, no, nobody can be helped. God can do nothing. If we don't preach, nobody can be saved because God's powerless. is a failure. Here's, a, here's, here's another one for you. One more, okay? If we don't mind the devil, God can do nothing. <laughs> you got to pray every day. Mind the devil. I'm coming over to your, to your house tomorrow so we can bind the devil. Hello? So God can do nothing because we have to bind the devil. People say, well, you know, the devil has power. Really? <laughs> okay, I'm going to agree with you. There are times when he has power. Here's the question. Who gave it to him? Have you ever seen the devil have power? Yes. So who gave it to him? Because God never gave him no power. God never gave him no authority in the earth. God never gave him any power or authority in this earth or over you or nothing. So where the heck does he get the power from? I'm about to reveal it. Drum roll. He's getting it from you and me. We give it to him every day. Jesus said, Jesus by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Jesus gave himself to us. He's the head of the church. He gave himself to us. And he put everything under our feet. And gave us authority and power over demons and the devil. And all evil and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Because you have the power. You have the authority in yeah. and through the name of Jesus. On, yeah. He's given it to the whole body of Christ. He has no power. Yeah. That sucker is under your feet. He yeah. has no power. Hallelujah. So why are you giving me power? You're the yeah. only one who can empower me. Quit it. Let's go. Yeah. Well, I don't know, you know, I think I'm catching a cold. Come on. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of cancer in my family. I guess I'm going to get cancer. Come on. The devil says, Phew, thank you. I've been trying to get that, that door open. She just opened it. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello. Well, I guess this, these migraine headaches are just going to stay with me all my life. The devil says, whew. Now I can, I can, I can, I can I keep her. Now. I can keep her now. Come on. Hello. Amen. I wrote all this stuff in my book. Some of it I'm going to talk about real quickly. It's chapter 11. I'll talk about what happened here in America. you got to look at things through the eyes of God. You can't look through Communist News Network. You can't even look through Fox. you got to look through the shepherd's eyes. Come on. Right. Not the Fox. Right. you got to say, Holy Spirit, show me. Open my eyes. Amen. But in 1997, God showed me. He said, there's a plan that is coming against this country from the devil to take over this country. Who's going to give him the power to do it? Yeah. We are. Yeah. The devil came with a plan. This is nothing about Democrats or, or Republicans. There are more Christians leading in healing themselves to the devil than politicians sometimes. So don't always blame the politicians. But the devil got a plan. And the Lord said to me, there's a 20 year plan. To turn America into a Muslim state. Sharia law. Come on. He said it's going to start in 2000 and run through 2020. By 2020, America is going to be like Saudi Arabia or maybe more, than, more so than Iran. Holy Spirit said to me, you know I'm going to destroy that plan. Amen. Come on. 
because I told you I called America. Here's something, Brother Tim, so amazing. Back in 1979, this after I got baptized with the Spirit, the Lord screamed at me in my office one day. I called America! Amen. Go. <laughs> okay, okay, for what? <laughs> I called America to be my instrument of power and glory to take the last day outpouring of my spirit and distribute it to all the nations of the world. I called America. I said, okay, all right, okay. From 1979 until 1989, a 10-year period just shortly after I got here, I'm telling you, Sydney, there was not one month go by that he would not holler at me. I called America. He said to me, you go in there. I said, Lord, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I don't care. I have no agenda. That's why most Christians can't follow God. That's why most people called to the ministry. They were successful in their ministry because they've got their own stupid agenda. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. When the Lord called me, I said, you know what? I'll just take every plan I have and burn them. Amen. I burned them back then. <laughs> to help with them. I'm going to follow God. He's got the whole plan. I'm going to walk with the Holy Spirit. So he's going to show me the plan. Sometimes takes a week and shows you a little bit. Sometimes a month, sometimes six months. Show you a little bit. But you walk the thing out and he'll bring it to fulfillment for you. But I'm not using no. I'm going to do that. No, I'm not. I, I got this plan. Burn it. He said, I called America. I called America. And the devil said, I'll destroy America. The plan came. It started with 9 11. Then it moved. From the terrorism part into the political arena. Then the attack came. The Lord said that to me. He showed all this before. Him. Don't be mad because the devil used Obama and Hillary. The devil has used probably more Christians more times than he did them. They were instrument in the wrong hands to turn this country into a Muslim state. It's not about politics. It's the greatest attack that came against this country. It's not about what Obama did. It's not about who Trump is. God told me, I called him. Yeah. The night he signed on, to, on that escalator to run, he came down the escalator, the Lord stood, stood, stood behind me and spoke audibly and said, that's the next president of the United States. I was mad. I said, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> he spoke audibly. I, after I got over the shock, I said, you must be kidding me. I don't like him. <laughs> God said to me, did I ask you whether you like him or not? <laughs> he, said, he said, do you think I called him because it's about liking or popularity? He said, didn't we talk about this when I first called into the ministry and you told me you're the wrong person for the job and I agreed with you? <laughs> I said, Lord, I, I was a bad person. I was a fighter. I was mad. I was crazy. One night I pushed a guy with a car off the road and I started beating him to pieces. I mean, I was bad. I was never big, but I was fast. And, and, and so when the Lord called me, I said, Lord, I'm not the minister. I'm not the... Hello, brother. Praise God. How are you? Thanks. <laughs> I'm not that kind of personality. I, I'm not a pastor or a minister. I'm wild. I'm a rogue. I said, Lord, I'll be the wrong person. Please don't call me. He said, you are the wrong person, but I'm going to call you because I've called what I want. Because I'm going to take, take the failure that you are, and you're going to turn yourself over to me, and I'm going to manifest my, my presence and my ministry through you. So shut up. Never yeah. told me. So when you get to Trump, he said, we've had this thing out when I called you first in the ministry. He said, on purpose, many times I called the worst person for the job. Come on. Because it's going to be my plan, my hand, my purpose, my glory, my will, my purpose. And no man will take my glory. Yeah. Amen. And the Lord said to me, he's going to do three things for this country. He's going to restore this country financially, excuse me, economically, financially, and morally. Yeah. And then, of course, the devil came with COVID this year. But let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. God is about to turn this whole thing on COVID on the devil's butt and set it on fire. Let's go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday, the two days, the whole thing with the COVID for the president, the Lord said, just watch. I'm going to turn this to my glory. Just watch. Yeah. Yeah. I said, okay. Yeah. Come on. So the Lord said to me, you know, after the election of Mr. Obama to, to, to the presidency, the Lord was mad. He said to me, you know who got him elected, got him the votes? The church. 
Do you know that every international, internationally evil, ungodly thing that's happened the last 20 years, the church signed off on it and authorized it? I remember real quickly, the night after Benghazi. Benghazi, September 11, 2012. The next morning, I woke up. You know, I'm just a normal person like everybody else. I woke up, I stepped off the bed. The moment my right foot hit the floor, I'm in the spirit. I walked around the house, I don't know where I was, walked past my house, walked outside to the fountain, and the Lord spoke about the, the, the lake. What, what do you call it? Behind the house. The Lord said to me, get in your office, I want to talk to you. I get in the office, and he started to talk to me about all this, what happened, what went wrong, what's taking place. He's mad. He said, the church again signed off on this, sanctioned this. If the church tonight will come into agreement with God's plan all over the world, the devil will immediately be paralyzed. Yeah. All these people are praying against the devil all the time. All these Christians, we're praying against the devil. <laughs> Pray that the church will get filled with God. Yeah. Come into unity, in power, fire and glory, and stand up and tell the devil, say, sit down and shut up, you know. Yeah, my. Yeah. It is going to happen now because the fire of God's coming. Yeah. Amen. Well, unless you bite the devil. <laughs> so the Lord said to me, so back to the big Aussie day, all morning in my office, that afternoon, I'm sitting on the couch with my wife. I mean, just sitting there, just normal. I just sharing with her some of the stuff the Lord said to me. I look over to the right. The moment I, something here caught my attention, some movement, I turned my head to the right and froze from head to toe. I saw the Lord. I've never seen Him do it before or since. I don't know how He did it. He is extending His head almost. Forgive me, Lord. I don't have any other comparison. It's almost like He has He has the the neck of a camel or or or, 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 or a giraffe, and extends His neck. With his head all the way down from here, here he comes into the earth. <laughs> I froze. He kept coming all the way down. And then as I looked, I, I saw a man, as, 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 when he got to about floor level, I'm looking, I see this man walking there. Uh, he's dressed in, 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 in Muslim clothing. And then the Lord came down here and turned his face and his head. We brought it to the, as he started moving towards this man, I said, oh my God, I know what this is. It's the Muslim spirit. And the Lord got right over there. Show, I'm going to demonstrate it here. But he, he got right over there on that side, put his head right up to him like this. And he spoke ten words. I'll never forget the rest of my, of my life. He said, I am the Lord God Almighty. And who are you? Did you know that if you're not known in the world of the spirit, that means because you're a zero. Remember the seven sons of Sceva? Yeah. Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Yeah. God the Father reached down and looked at that Muslim spirit and said, I am the Lord God Almighty. And who are you? Let's go. I don't know you because you're a zero. As fast as he spoke to this thing, I mean instantaneous, he's gone. And this thing fell over and began to convulse and vomit. His snake began to peel off him like this, the snake of a python, you know, snake. This began, it was horrible. Yeah. He's vomiting, convulsing. And, and, and the Holy Spirit said to me, now the spirit of Islam is judged. And over the next few years, I will cause... It's worship, it's establishments to begin to fall apart. Mm. And all of it will come to nothing. Jesus. Because I am God. Yeah. This is the year 2020. This year, this country was supposed to adopt Sharia law. Mm. Are you kidding me? Mm. Well, unless we buy the devil. Let me tell you this tonight. God is no failure. Amen. God is no failure. Come on. Hallelujah. We have failed God. Yeah. The church has failed God. Yeah. We are, I'm speaking universally, sick, miserable, weak, confused, messed up, filled with doctrines that are demonic, they look like they're God, 
but it's deception. I'm preaching every Sunday at 5 o'clock on Facebook. You can befriend us and watch it. We're doing a series right now on unmasking deception. We're tearing, this, we're tearing the skin of this deception, antichrist spirit that has deceived you. If I could sit down with you tonight, I could show you that probably 90, 90 to 95 percent of the Christian doctrines you have are wrong. They're not given to you by God. If you read my book, you'll see it's all in here too. Now let me begin to wrap this together. Here's something I only saw today, this afternoon. See, God's a God of times and seasons, plans and purposes. The church is not, but He is. Soon will be when God's meteor hit us. Glory to God. Let's go, yeah. But even this afternoon, because in, in, early, in June of 2017, the Lord said to me, the book that you wrote in 96 about the golden glory, which is God's end time plan for this end time revival and harvest and glory. I want you to, to redo this book. Revise it, update it. You knew, you know that you left out a lot the first time because the publisher said, keep it on a turn page. He said, you're going to put in everything you left out and more. Mm -hmm. To start rewriting the book. What did you see this afternoon? See, God's a God of times and seasons. Do you know that the last generation, it's all in my book, the last generation among the Gentiles, there's three groups of people. Paul says, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 32, give no offense to the, the, the Jews, the Gentiles, or the church. As a matter of what nationality you are, you're falling in one of those three categories. Mm -hmm. You're either a Jew, you're a Gentile, or you're born again, you're in the church. Yeah. And do you know that every one of those three groups have a final generation? Mm -hmm. The Gentiles, 1946, is all in my book, 1946 mm -hmm. to 2016. The church, 1947 to 2017. Israel, 1948 to 2018. Oh. 70 years is the official lifespan of a generation. This time God is extending it to 80. But 70 is the official number. This is what I saw this afternoon. The Lord just showed me this this afternoon. When the Lord spoke to me in June of 2017, He said, as you write this book, I'm going to open up a whole lot more things to you. Yeah. Making known to us, Ephesians 1, 9, making known to us the mystery, the secret, of his will, of his plan, of his purpose. The secrets of this end time plan were still hidden until the church fulfilled its 70 years of the final generation. Only saw that this afternoon. If you don't know times and seasons, it will mean nothing to you. It does mean nothing to you. But as soon as the 70 year generation of the church was concluded in May and June of 2017, God said to me, write this book, and he began to open up to me a revelation I could never dream of before. I can see you haven't read the book. God said to me, you want to sit down and you are right. Everything I've got to tell you, I don't care how many pages it is, you want to obey it. And he says, this is my book. You are right, my book. I write it my way, with my words, with my plans, with my revelation. This is your assignment. We think we're special because God gives us an assignment. No, no, you're burdened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the burden of this book rested on my shoulder. For the entire time I wrote this, it's a good burden, but it's there. For right. just short of three years, took me just short of three years to do this. Now, I gotta start getting bold because there's no time to play games. Yeah. Other people are called to other things. I respect everybody's calling. I'm not the only one. I'm not Mr. Whether it was the chief uh, Indian, whatever. But God gave me this task. He said, You are gonna write the book on my end time plan. And I did it, 400 pages. I remember the day I was speaking to the lady at the printing company and I was making the final changes that she's doing, the final changes before we go to print. It felt like you took this heavy coat and pulled it off my shoulders. The burden lifted. The joy of God hit me. I didn't give my wife the phone. I started shouting and running around the house. The burden of the project left me Amen. because it was successfully, completely completed exactly the way that God wanted it to be. Yeah. Yeah. People say, oh, there you go again, all these Christian people. All they want to do is sell books. I tell you what, I don't want anybody to buy this book. 
I don't want any Christian to buy it. I only want Christians that are on fire for God to buy it. Because yeah. if you're not on fire for God, you're not going to read the 400 pages. Yeah. And I'm telling you this, I go deep, the Lord said to me. You go into everything I tell you as deep as I say to go because no more time to play games and baby Christian and feed the church with old rotten milk. It's time to get into the meat and the steaks and the deep things of the Spirit of God and you're going to write everything. There's stuff in here that is so deep. There's stuff in here the church has never taught. Amen. So why not? Because the church didn't know. Yeah. Why not? Because it was part of the mystery. Right. That was hidden is now revealed. Amen. There's things in here you never heard of in your life. Mm. Never dream of. Mm. There's things in here about how God is going to transform the church with fire. And then how he's going to raise up the glorious church. Chapter 8. Chapter 8. The supreme dominion of the glorious church. I've never heard about things like this. And when God put it together for me, I was sitting in my office, I started to weep. The presence of God hit me. I was weeping two hours, just sitting there shaking and weeping. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe what you showed me. And then he points out the scriptures. Look at this. Look at it. Look at it. Get it into your spirit. I tell you what, if you read this book with your brain, you're stupid. If you read this book, before you do open up, say, Holy Spirit, yeah. teach me. Yeah. Yeah. It's got my name on them because I'm the vessel. This is a book of God. God wrote this book. There ain't no other one coming. This is the end time plan. It's called the golden glory revolution of God right there. Amen. If you're hungry for God, get it. If not, don't bother. Amen. Because soon people will stand in line to get it. Amen. That's what I'm saying to you right now. Soon yes. people will stand in line to get it and we could not print it fast enough. Amen. Ebook or whatever doesn't matter. We would not be in the next few years. We would not be able to print this fast enough. Amen. Because the fire is going to come. Then the hunger will hit the church. They'll stand in line. When I remember 1990, 89, when I preached in Portugal, I saw people stand in line at five services a day. They were in revival. A thousand people filled the auditorium. Happens five times on the Sunday. In, out, in, out. Three hours, in, out. And, and between services, we were watching people standing up all the way, half a mile up uh, on the hill to get in. And the Lord said to me, I'm telling you, listen, I'm saying to you right now, the day will come when you'll see long lines of people like this trying to get into services in America. Yeah. Wow. Not just Benny Hinn Crusade everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your services, others. Long lines. They'll sleep overnight like they do in the movies. They go and sleep and camp out for a week. They can do it in our meetings and other meetings because the fire and the glory of God's going to fall there and yeah. the hunger will hit the people and the church will come alive yeah. and the church will wake up and the hunger will begin to burn the hearts of people. Yeah. And they yeah. say, my God, I, I, I have Holy Spirit. But the anointing and those services, the outpouring of fire and glory has never been seen. Oh, my God. Uh, here comes uh, the newspaper report uh, 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 or the television, local television station. Why do you lay in sleep out here every night? Because when you get in that service, I'm telling you, even if you lay in sleep all night long, all week long, it's worth it. The first hour, the fire of God will hit me, yeah. and I'll burn. The second hour, the glory will hit me, and oh my God, and I'll be turning to thinking I'm Superman. I must be pure and full of the glory of God. Oh yes, hallelujah. It's coming. It may not be you or me, but it's going to be somebody. I'm going to make sure it's me. Amen. I say every day, every day, I speak over myself. I say in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, pour some more hunger for God into my spirit today. You have to do it. I have to have it. I have to have more. I've seen so many Christians for years have run with us. Now they're gone. They're not hungry anymore. Mm. I'm telling you this tonight. I'm going to start wrapping this together. I'm going to start praying for people. Let me tell you this. My God is no failure. That's right. I don't care what church you're from, the first or free church or church, whatever. I don't care. I'm telling you this. My God is no failure. Amen. You disregard his times and seasons. We're 72 years in the final 80-year generation. You disregard his plans and purposes of fire and glory. His meteors on the way. After that, the glory comes straight from the Father. Yep. That will hit this whole church, entire body of Christ. You, you, you disregard that. You are going to be hit by the fire and the glory. But you'll be behind on God's schedule. And while we that are hungry, there are two remnant army. Right now, God is looking for and is raising up a true remnant army. Yep. What's that? Somebody says, Lord, I've got to have that hunger. Yeah. I'm going, I've got to, every day I'm going to ask you. Every day I'm going to say, I have got to have this hunger. I have got to have a fire in my spirit because your fire, before your fire hits my body. I've got to have some fire. Yeah. I've got to be set alight. 
I've got to be set ablaze. I, I've got to have some quickening in my spirit. I, I've got to have some fresh anointing. I've got to have some fresh touch of God. I will not be satisfied. I don't care that, about the whole church out there is dead and dry. I am not going to be that way. I'm going to stand before you until you touch me, until you anoint me, until you pour some fire into my spirit, until you set me ablaze inside my human spirit. Because I'm born again and I am not going to miss the greatest visitation of God in the planet. I will not miss the climax of the ages. I don't care a hell what the rest of the church does. I'm telling you, I will be there when the fire hits first time. I will be there when the glory is poured into us. I will be there. I will not miss it. I'm not just a screamer and a shouter. I'm a pursuer. I'm a seeker. I'm a runner. Glory to God. While the whole church is sleeping, some are looking for this, some are looking for that. There is a blueprint right from the Bible, duplicated in here. Hallelujah. There is a revolution. This is not a revival. This is not some quickening. This is a revolution from God that's coming. And I will be part of it right from the word go. You're called to be. Amen. But who will be? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I think the sound is not on. Nobody's shouting. I'm jumping up and I think people can't hear. <laughs> Turn on the sound. <laughs> I got through this book. Several people over this country got this book in the mail. Power clock here. One young girl called me and told me something the Lord told her. When she got the book in her hands, I can't repeat it. <laughs> I said, you, you cannot know that but by the Spirit of God. Mm. She told me exactly what my role is going to be in this end time revival. I know that. My wife knows that. Few people know that. But four or five people, I, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable in sharing that. She told me the whole thing. She said the moment she touched the book, God started to speak to her. Because there are still people who are hungry for God. Yeah. Yeah. There's still people who know that God is not a failure. I said, God is not a failure. Somebody needs to talk to me. I said, God is not a failure. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The church projects that. My God is not a failure. Come on. He's the God of all glory. He's about to take this place yeah. and shake it. Mm. He's about to shake this place. Hallelujah. Violently. And he's going to shake the heavens to begin with. Yes. And he's going to shake the earth. He's going to shake the universe. He's going to shake the planets. He's going to shake all people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about the Muslims? What about those who don't believe in God? Are you kidding me? Oh, come on. You know, a speck on the earth. Well, I don't believe in God. Who the hell cares? Amen. I don't believe in God. I don't care what you believe. Fire hits you. You know that you're burning from head to toe. Now let me say this, I'm going to start wrapping this up. We've been in some services. Buddy's been with us, of course my wife. Some of you have been in some services where the Lord would say, I'm going to pour out fire tonight. And the fire got here. And people run around the place screaming. Then other people come to me and say, you should cast out the demons. <laughs> God have everlasting mercy on the ignorant and the stupefied. You see, here's the problem. Since, 19, since the early 1960s, Catherine Kuhlman taught the church how to know God. Yeah. You don't know God through the Word? Really? No. You don't know God through Jesus Christ. He's not here. He's at the right hand of the Father. That's religious garbage. That's the Antichrist doctrines to pull you away from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. It's only the Arthur Paul. You only know God one way, one person, one fellowship, Holy Spirit. Holy, what? That's the problem. <laughs> Catherine Coleman taught America how to have a breakthrough with God who lives in you, Holy Spirit, and walk with Him. The church is to help with Him. God sent Benny him. Same message, same reaction. God sent me in the days of the revival. I preached to a lot of people. I was able to convert a lot of Christians, get them out of religious Christianity into Holy Spirit Christianity. Which is true Christianity. The rest of us are the Antichrist. It is. Amen. 99% yeah. of what they do in church on Sundays are the Antichrist. Mm. They worship the Lord, love Jesus. Then they get out their shofar and their Old Testament stuff and act like Jesus never came by spit in his face. He never did nothing. Mm. 
All the time. You bring that sofa into my meeting, I'll break it. And then I'll burn it. Because I walk with the sofa of the New Testament. I live in the New Testament. I live in the New Testament. The church does not. But you can. You can. I live in the New Testament. What's the New Testament? Matthew 1? Are you stupid? Are you stupid like the rest of the church? What is the New Testament? How come we as the church don't know what the New Testament is? The New Testament is the complete and fulfilled salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which he gave to us when he came out of that grave after his resurrection. Yeah. That's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, if it's not for the resurrection, we have nothing. But our whole salvation and our hope and our trust is in Christ, in his resurrection, in the eternal life that he came out of the grave with, became available to us the moment he stepped foot out of that grave. Yeah. That's the New Testament. The New Testament's not Matthew 1, it's Matthew 28, when he came out of the grave. Amen. Let's go. How can the church live in the New Testament when the church doesn't even know what the heck New Testament is? Mm. You ain't going to have that Antichrist teaching tell you that. Mm. So now we're in this predicament. I'm trying to close here. We're in this predicament. If God would show up tomorrow in real power in the church, especially if it's very powerful and demonstrative, we can try and cast out demons. Because we would not know whether it's God or the devil because we don't know God. Because we have no relationship with God. We have no walk with Holy Spirit. We don't know Him. We don't hear from Him. We can't discern when He talks to us. So we would not know. When the fire first falls, the church is going to try and cast out demons. Mm. Until it hit the rest of them. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I'm from Africa. We made a lot of fires. Campfires out the country. You don't make some big old raging fire and then step in the middle of it and say, um, it's hot. It'll burn your butt off, did Jimmy? Whatever your name is. It'll burn and you'll scream, ah, jump out of the fire. Now we see God's fire somehow because God's a failure. God's fire, fire is not really strong. Just tingle your back a little bit. Nobody's going to preach along with me tonight, so I'm just keep going all night. <laughs> The fire of God's going to burn the hell out of you. Amen. Telling you right now. Amen. But the result is going to be glorious. Hallelujah. Part of it, part I don't like to talk about, I do in the book. Fire of God will judge some people. Amen. They're born again, they'll go to heaven. But they will not be a part of this great, grand finale. The climax of the ages. This is the climax of the ages. Paul calls this the climax of all ages. The outpouring, the fire, the glory, yeah. the revival, yeah. the harvest of billions of people, Jesus coming on the clouds of glory. It is Shabbat. It is the conclusion of Shabbat, the spiritual Shabbat. 90 to 95% of them are going to be saved. If you don't believe that, talk to Jesus about it. He might scream at you and ask you why you don't believe in his end time harvest just like he screamed at me. He screamed at you. You're going to believe it five minutes later. <laughs> well, you know, if we pray and intercede, then we empower God, He can do something. If we preach the gospel, then we empower God, He can save somebody. If we bind the devil, then God can do something. My God is both my knees. You don't need you to bind nothing, He needs you. To stomp on the devil's head and say, you the hell out of here. You have authority. Yeah. Come on. Use it. If you're watching here, everybody's so excited, they're jumping up and down shouting. <laughs> this stuff's, this, I mean, this stuff's really, it's really, it's really hitting home tonight. Yeah. People can hardly contain themselves. Let's go. Get up. And use your authority and kick the devil in the darn head and throw him out of your house yeah. or put a double barrel shotgun bullet in his head or two of them, throw him out the trash and set it on fire. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Let's go. When you decide, I am going to use my thought. All these people always binding the devil. All these people always loosening this. All these people always praying over this. All these people always counseling, counseling, counseling. We counsel people because all they want us to do is pacify them and sympathize with them and shame, 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 shame. That's what, 
but, but no, because they do not mean business with God. Most people who are sitting counseling all the time never mean business with God. Most Christians. Because if they're Christians, you just tell them, you have authority in and through the name of Jesus. Yeah. Everything has been placed under your feet. Get up and kick the devil to hell. What the hell is wrong with you? Get up! Kick him out of your life. Yeah. Take authority over him. Break the power that he has over, had over your life. Take back the power in his assignment. Tell him you've done get the hell out of my house, out of my family. Get out of here. Yeah. Now, Amen. I have authority. Yeah. You know why the Bible says that he be ignorant, be ignorant still? I thought, why doesn't God want to help the ignorant? Let him who are, is ignorant, who are ignorant be ignorant still. And then it hit me. Because those in the church who are ignorant yeah. are that way because they have no hunger for God. Amen. And if you have no hunger for God, he's going to leave you alone. And let you be ignorant still as long as you want to be. Oh my God only touches people who have faith and hunger. Yeah. The rest he can't touch because they don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. And hunger is greater than faith. Amen. There's nobody out there. Everybody's gone home. I've too long. <clears throat> and hunger is a thousand times greater than faith. Because yeah. faith is greater than it touches the heart and the hand of God. It gets you the promises of the new covenant. Faith touches the hand of God when he gives. Yes. Hunger touches the heart of God. Amen. And you get everything that's in his heart. Amen. Whoa! Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. What kind of bunk junk of baloney is in your house in your life? He gets sick and tired and fed up and say, I'm done with this. I'm done with it. Let me tell you something, devil. Let me speak to my body. Let me speak to this mind. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, you dumb, stupid meathead. You stupid meathead, listen to me. I, the spirit man, I have authority over you. Yeah. Yeah. You stop being miserable and depressed. Depressed. Oh. Depressed. Yeah. You're standing on the threshold of the greatest visitation of God in this planet ever. And you want to be depressed? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? We're standing on the threshold of the greatest visitation of God to this planet. We're 72 years into the final generation. God has promised. The prophets have promised. Jesus has promised. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. I will show signs and wonders and miracles. I will pour out my fire and my glory. I will visit you in the power of my glory. And the chief says, no way, God's a failure, never going to happen. Mm. Yes. I'm telling you tonight, God is no failure. That's right. We have failed, the devil has failed permanently. Yeah. God is the glory. Yeah. He is, the Bible says, He is the glory. He is the glory yeah. and the lifter of my hand. Yeah. I'm keep shouting another hour. Some people might wake up and start running around the building, start getting excited. Oh. Hello! Thank you, Lord. Yeah. They said, be God forever. To hell with the devil. God has chosen us. He has called us. He has handpicked you from before the foundation of the world to be the generation, to be the people of the last day. God's last day, great grand finale, his final visitation of the church age. Yes. Hallelujah. The climax of all the ages, the greatest visitation and work and power of God in the earth. And the church is gone fast asleep in the midst of this as it's round, just around the corner. Fast asleep in a spiritual, religious, dumb, demonic slumber. But, you're not hearing me. But, I gotta wake up somebody. I'll demonstrate again. But, there is a people. There is a people tonight. I don't know how many of them are in here. There are some people tonight who said, you know what? Let me tell you something. 
to hell with this. To hell with all the hogwash, the garbage, the antichrist stuff, the, the defeat, the, the confusion, the misery. I am going to hook up with the Spirit of God. I'm going to hear from God. I'm going to God. I gave three years of my life to take that whole plan of God and write it 400 pages all in here. Whole thing. Whole thing. Everything's in here. We've sent a bunch of these books out for free. Some people talk, wrote, wrote, said, we don't have the money. Can I get more? Send it. Amen. Any pastor they tell me about, I just send him a book free. Amen. And soon, this book is going to hit home. Yeah. yeah. Because most people still try to read with their meat head. Yeah. Because they've done everything in their lives with their meat head. Yeah. They've never said, Holy Spirit, teach me. Lead me. Talk to me. Open my eyes. Let the scales fall off my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I can see and hear and receive the truth of God. We allow the things of this life, things that have no spiritual value, no eternal value, no eternal existence, to turn us away, to lead us by the nose, to get us involved in things that if we hook up with Holy Ghost, we'll solve quickly and we'll get back to the plan of God. But there is a people in the hour, in the, in the hour even this hour. There is a people in the earth today that has a hunger. I said to God the other day, don't look like you've got much remnant. He said to me, you are wrong. Oh. I said, Lord, among these pastors, don't look like you've got much rain in it all. Mm. Yeah. God said to me, am I not God? Amen. Holy Spirit said, I said, yes. He said, do I need anything? I said, I know you don't need me. I know you don't need us. I don't know you don't need anybody. He said, if I do not have a remnant in the earth today, that means I have a need. I have no needs. Amen. Amen. I just talked to my friend, Prophet Tim Whitmore. We're on the phone. He said to me, he calls me pastor. He said, Apostle, if it's you and me or my wife, us four, we're going to be God's friend and we're the only ones. I said, yeah, brother, we're going to be. I put the phone down. God said to me, do I have any needs? I said, in the couch, he said to me, do I have any needs? If what you just said is true, that means there's no remnant. If there's no special remnant, that means I have a need. That's right. God says, I have no needs. Mm. I have my remnant. Yeah. I've even prepared, here to me is the greatest miracles. Miracle. I've even prepared the hearts of remnant pastors. Wow. I said, wow, that's a miracle. Mm. <laughs> that's the biggest miracle. And soon they will rise mm. and take the shackles of religious bondage and spiritual slumber and then wake up! Amen. We're standing on the threshold tonight. I'm going to close. We're standing on the threshold tonight of the greatest visitation of God in the earth. The greatest. This one you are handpicked for. People, it doesn't matter your age or anything. You just got to keep breathing until the fire hits. Because the fire of God it's got the eagle's anointing in it. Yes. What does that mean? Yes. That means it's going to turn your body back to 22. Amen. Ah. Yeah. That's only the beginning. That's not the big part. Here's the big part. When you read chapter 8 of my book, and you see how that God would literally pour His own personal glory in you. Do you know that when He pours His glory into you, everything in you that's not perfect will be replaced by the glory of Jesus. Amen. You think Paul was lying? You think he was intoxicated with alcohol? Do you think Paul was crazy? Do you think Paul was nuts? Do you think Paul did not speak by the Spirit of God? Do you? Do you? Do you think Paul did not speak by the Spirit of God? Amy, do you think Paul did not speak by the Spirit of God? You bet your sweet baby that he did. Let me tell you something. Paul the Apostle spoke by the Spirit of God as much as Jesus did. Amen. If you don't believe that, you might as well call, throw your whole New Testament away and go back in the Old Testament and hope for salvation. Are you up there? Amen. Paul spoke by the Spirit of God. He told you that we will come, Ephesians 4, 13, is not of man. That you will come into the fullness of the measure 
of the stature of Christ unto a P E R F E C T man. A perfect man. You know what that word perfect means? It's the Greek word apokatastasis. You know what that means? It means the absolute perfection of God. That means. That means. If you read chapter 8 in my book, you won't sleep the night you read. I'm telling you. That means that when the glory hits you, now understand this, God has never poured out His own personal glory on people. This is the fullness of God's glory that He'll pour into the church. The fire will hit everybody, but the glory will be poured into the church. And when that happens, you will come. Your physical body will be exactly like Jesus' resurrected body. Not spiritual. Am I still out of the camera here? Not, 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 you won't have a spiritual body. Your physical body will be as pure and empowered as Jesus is. Right now. If not, Paul lied. If not, Holy Ghost lied to Paul. Well, then Jesus is a liar. Jesus said, John 17, 22, 23. He said, and, and the same unity, Father, that you and I have, I pray that those who will come after me will have. And that they may be one with us as we are one. And that they may be made. P-E-R-F-E-C-T. Perfect. John 17, 23. In your Bible, Jesus said, They will become totally, completely perfect with the absolute perfection of God. Amen. Well, why don't we hear this preach? Because the Antichrist spirit that controls the church will not allow anybody to preach that. But he don't control me. The hell was his butt. Amen. Didn't have no say in my life. Since Holy Ghost came to me in 1979. God ripped the whole religious system out of my heart and my life. Pulled it out of me. Set me free and say, go introduce Holy Ghost. Announce revival. The joy is coming. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Perfect. Paul says this real quickly. 2 Corinthians 3.18. But how do you say what happened? We will move from glory to glory until the fullness of the image of Christ, like in a mirror. That means when you look in the mirror, no difference between you and Jesus. You'll see him. Come on. And we've messed up the word of God so much we don't know what's truth anymore. Yeah. When I began to read that body, the Lord said to me, How many levels of glory are there? I said two. He said to me, The first one is salvation. The second one is the transformation of the last days. Into the perfection of Christ in your body. Yeah. Mm. Almost fell off the chair. He said, go study that. He said, go study that. He said, go study that even in the Greek. The Greek word for total perfection is teleo. It's only used of Jesus and they used in these scriptures of the church of what we would become. Amen. This is what's been ordained for you. Yeah. And then you walk around with depression. Are you bloody crazy? Mm. Have you lost your mind? Mm. You think you're not going to make it. You think it's not going to work? You think you think God you think God has not called you and selected you? You called. You called and selected. You part of this army. You can be part of the slack army or the remnant army. That's your choice. You called to this. You will stand in the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ, whether you come in late or you come in right up front with the remnant. That's your choice. That's my choice. But you will. I promise you. I bet you, sweet baby, you will receive the fire. You won't receive the glory. You won't be transformed. And you will fulfill your destiny. To hell with the devil and anything that may trouble you tonight. Yeah. Amen. To hell with it in yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. You won't fulfill your destiny. Let's you go. go to this. Yeah. And you ain't got no choice. Hallelujah. There's no choice. There's divine destiny. There's no choice. There's divine providence. There's no choice. There's divine calling. There's no choice. This is the will of God. The what will, the plan, the purpose. This is the will, the plan, the purpose of God. Amen. Come on, Holy Spirit. Uh, Only choice you have is you come in early, be part of the remnant, or you sleep with the rest of the church and come in late. Mm. Come in late when the fire hits you. Mm. I said, Lord, I have not spent 37 years screaming at the church to miss my calling. This is the calling of the ages. Yeah. For 72 years. 72 years. 
We're 72 years into the final generation. The meteor of God, of God's fire, is already in the air. Amen. Well, I don't know if I can believe this. <laughs> sleep on, sleeper. Dream on, dreamer. Be part of 99% of the church. Sleep on, sleeper. Dream on, dreamer. What is the conclusion of the matter, preacher? The conclusion is this. My God is not a failure. Amen. Let's go. Yeah. Amen. Let's go. Amen. The church has failed. But God's going to take this mess. Burn it with fire. Burn everything out of it. The devil and the Antichrist has put it in the church for 2,000 years. Then, when you cleanse and purify it, then he's going to send his glory. This is going to happen here now in your lifetime. This is not 1948. This is not the charismatic revival 67. This is not the joy revival 1987 and 1990s. This is, this is the great grand finale. My wife got this title as the best title. God gave her the title, God's Gold and Glory Revolution. Amen. It is a revolution that the world has never seen or could never dream of. Amen. It's a revolution like the church could never even imagine. Yeah. It's the revolution of Christ by His Spirit and His glory. Amen. This is the goodest news <clears throat> ever. This is the best news ever since Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. I'm answering the call. Yes, yes. I'm not proud to say this, but even these last few months, I've worked on some things just in my mind that God has spoken to me about. I got them out. Just some junk that comes in my mind. I got them out. Come on. Discover them. Discover them. Amen. I said, Lord, I'm deepening my commitment to you from my spirit. I tell him every day, stir me up, anoint me, fill me. Give me more hunger. Give me more thirst. Every day. Every day. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Because I'm going to answer the call. Yeah. How about you? Amen. Yeah. How about you? Now, I'm sorry to have to shock you. It's about everything the church does from the time they open service on Sunday morning to the time they leave. It's a slap in the face of Jesus. He's good enough to be our Savior. When it comes to money, we've got to go back to Moses and the Lord. Jesus didn't save us from poverty. I explained all this much. All those doctrines and stuff that you've held up all your life, it's a lie. I expose it here with the New Testament. Yeah. Amen. You've got to tithe because. Jesus didn't provide you prosperity on the, on the cross. If you read the Bible, the writings of Paul in Hebrews chapter 7, he shows you how the, the tithes came from Melchizedek to Abraham, to Aaron, to the Levitical priesthood. Then God raised up a new priest who was also the high priest, who was also the sacrifice. Listen to me, listen to me. And he replaced the imperfect priesthood of the Levitical priesthood with a new priesthood. Being the new high priest, being the new sacrifice, this priest does not come from the tribe of Levi. Amen. This one comes from the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Read Hebrews chapter 7. Yeah. He replaced it. He killed. If Jesus didn't kill the old priesthood, you would have no salvation. Yeah, amen. Because that means he would have had to save you with the blood of bulls and goats. Yeah. But that's a bunch of bulls. He saved you with his own blood. Amen. He saved you with his own blood. <laughs> yeah. I challenge you. I double dog dare you, like they say in the Republic of Texas. Go take your Bible tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow. Get into Hebrews chapter 7. I challenge you to read it. Look up all every different translation you want to. Every time, I'm going to shock you. I'm going to tell you straight because there's no more time for playing games and causing people. The church and the Antichrist spirit of the church is responsible for our poverty. God's blessed us in the past through mercy and grace, not through new covenant power and new covenant blessings. But if people will rise now, they're going to take the old covenant and burn it. 
Mm. Well, you don't really have to burn at the stake. Mm. Come on. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Hebrews 8, 13. He says, this old, the old covenant is decaying. Yeah. Because it was replaced by a new covenant. Yeah. Yes. Hebrews 7, new priesthood. Same order, Melchizedek. Mm. New priest. New priesthood. New tribe. New sacrifice. New blood. New salvation. Mm. New redemption. All new. Then chapter 8 he says, therefore, the covenant too had to go. Hebrews, 2 uh, Corinthians, real quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 6, 7, and 8. He says, he says to, the, to the Corinthians, This which was glorious was Moses in the past, has now passed away. You know, in 2002, June 15, 2002, my earthly father passed away. That's me, he died. The whole covenant, the whole thing that Moses made, passed away! But the church always running back there. Mm. Living there. To the shame of the spice of Jesus. Like spitting in his face. The moment you go back into any Old Testament doctrines. You say Jesus was not the Christ. He was nobody. Never did nothing for me. I've got to go back and live by the Old Testament. The church does this every Sunday. Mm. Amen. Fire is coming boys. I'm going to burn the hell out of this. Amen. Yes. Not me. I ain't got that stuff in me. The Lord said to me. If you do not. I'm going to come over here. If you do not explain. If you do not preach the truth in this book, I'm going to judge you. I said, no, you're not going to judge me. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to skin all the religious garbage of the Antichrist in the church. I'm going to skin all that Old Testament blasphemy of Jesus. I'm going to skin it out. Amen. I'll put it in plain stuff, 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 stuff. I don't care who the hell likes it or not. Well, they never invite you to preach in the church again. I've never preached in many churches last eight, nine, ten years. God's kept us, provided for us, prospered us. If we need a man to prosper, we're in trouble. Amen. Amen. We don't. Yes. Amen. We don't. Amen. We got God. We got faithful partners like you. Amen. The whole place is full of faithful partners. Go. God in a good. I'm wrapping it up. I promise you. I challenge you. Like they say in the Republic of Texas. You're going to take chapter 13 of this book. Take out your Bible, honey. And you're going to see every time you live and practice Old Testament stuff. Every time you live and practice Old Testament stuff, you're spitting in Jesus' face. Wow. Paul says to the Hebrews, don't do this. Don't do this. He said, do not after you were born again. Go back to the law of the Old Testament and make an open shame of Jesus after you were born again. Just does it every Sunday. Every Sunday. We do money Old Testament way. That's why the church is poor. And the Lord yeah. said to me to tell you. And I wrote it in the book. Because you know what? I wrote it so plain and straightforward in the book. It will offend anybody who doesn't want the truth. <laughs> but you know what? I lay at, at, at night in my bed. Put my head in my pillow. And sleep with peace. The presence of God's all around me. <clears throat> He said to me, if you don't do this, if you don't confront this, if you don't preach the truth and tear all this stuff apart, I will judge you. I said, no, sir, you're not going to judge me. I'm going to do it. There's truth, there's deliverance, there's freedom. That's the apostolic that's going to be restored. Amen. The prophetic side is all the wonderful stuff, the fire, the glory, the revival, the harvest, billions of people. Do you know the end time harvest? Do you know that Jesus, when Jesus comes in the clouds of glory, the amount of people going up in the rapture would be somewhere between 7.5 and 8.5 billion people. If it's not that many, then God is a failure. His harvest failed, like he screamed at me. His harvest failed. Then God, Shabbat failed. Would fail. It won't fail. It won't fail. Wendy? Wendy? Billions. It won't fail. I'm saying to you tonight, you are not going to fail. You're going to fulfill your destiny. No. Now, now, I'm calling you to help me. It's you. First of all, I challenge you, double dog dare you, like they say in Texas, to take this book. There ain't no other one coming. This is it. And begin to work through it with Holy Spirit. You will be shocked, but you'll see. 
the light, the truth, the revelation, the awesomeness of the revival, the correction of all the apostolic stuff that's gone missing. Did you know, last thing, did you know, Tiffany, Holy Spirit was poured out in Jerusalem? Acts chapter 2, you know that, right? Right? You know what day that was? That was Sunday, June the 1st of the year AD 32. Do you know that 35 years later, 35 years later, 32, 42, 52, 62, 63, 4, 5, 6, 7, 35 years later, Paul the Apostle died in AD 67. When he died, there was no more a trace of any Holy Spirit presence or power left in the church. It took the church from Pentecost and wild and drunk in the Spirit on June the 1st, AD 32. The awesome revival in Jerusalem. The revival around in other nations. Antioch. The nations Paul. Uh, uh, preach the seven churches Paul established in power and glory 35 years after Pentecost in Jerusalem all Holy Ghost anointing power signs wonders revival gone by the time Paul died the religious church of the Antichrist had taken over now you see why it's so hard to get Holy Ghost and anointing and power back in the church but we won't have to try much anymore we could be days, weeks, or months away from the meteor of God hitting. They're not going to talk about that on Communist News Network. They're not going to talk about that on anything. They're not going to talk about that on Fox or anywhere. But God talks about it, and I will. You can too. You don't have to preach it. You find somebody's hungry, get in this book. If you can't pay for it, they can't pay for it, you tell me. We'll mail it to you. If they're hungry. If not, you can't help them. The ignorant will remain ignorant. The unhungry will remain unhungry. So they turn to God and say, help me. I have to have a certain level of hunger to move into the remnant army. You have to have a certain level of hunger. You can, you can help us. I'm closing this. You can help us. You can pray. You do more than pray. You can tell people, you've got to read this book. You've got to read this book yourself. You've got to sit down with the Holy Spirit. This book is written from God, sent to you. Have you read it? Three years it took me to sit with God, get everything you're saying exactly. I went deep. I went in. Everything God said, I went deep. This is not for babies. It's time for you to come off the rotten milk and start eating the meat of the flesh of the Word of God and grow up. And just strong people in God. Yes. I'm going to give you no more milk. You buy your milk at Ingalls or Kroger or whatever. I'm done giving you milk. That's what you get every Sunday in church is milk. It's yeah. meat. God's meat. You can help us. You can be a partner with our ministry. Let me tell you this, I'm prophesying. We could be six months to 12 months away, or even less, from an explosion of this ministry. Like we exploded back in 1993, this time's going to be 100 times bigger. The time will come soon, people stand in line begging for this book. The time will come soon, people, pastors will stand in line begging, please come to my church like they did in the 90s. You know, last time I said, yes, I'm coming. You know what I'm saying this time? I'm not coming, nothing. The Lord said to me this time, this time pastors call you, after they wake up, you don't go nowhere. You don't go nowhere. He said, but Lord, they want me to bring you know, to their churches. He said, you don't go nowhere until I tell you. Amen. Amen. When you first came to America, he said, every door opens, you go in. Mm. That was the last revival. This one, he said to me, you go nowhere. They invite you. I don't care if the pastor has 10,000 people in his church. You come to me and you talk to me. If I don't tell you to go, you don't go. Amen. If I tell you to go, that's the only time you go. He said, there's going to be churches of two, three hundred people I'm going to send you to. There's going to be people of five thousand churches I'm not going to send you to. This time, you don't go nowhere. I said, yes, Lord. I don't go nowhere. They're going to stand in line. I can tell you some other things you won't believe. It. The Lord said to me, 
You have a leading part in this next revival. You're going to obey me. You're going to take this fire, and you're going to, like you ran with the joy, you're going to run with this fire all throughout this nation, other nations of the world. We're raising up. We've already started to raise up ministers. Fire, I call them fire ministers. I call them the new breed of fire ministers. We're already beginning to raise them up. Glory. Mm. And when it hits you, they'll come. There's already, a few weeks ago, I sat with one of them, a woman. She has an apostolic call on her. She's sitting at a, at a restaurant with, with us, with Shelly and I, just weeping, weeping the sin. I said, I know God. God's given me these five nations. I know. I've been to two of them. I have great meetings, awesome meetings. God's going to send me. She said, I just, I, I just don't know how God's going to do it. I just don't know. The moment she said, I don't know how God's going to do it, the Holy Spirit told me. She said, right there. I said, wait a minute. What did you just say? She said, I don't know how God's going to do it. I said, I do. I do. The Lord just told me. I said, now let me tell you. Listen carefully. Listen very carefully. I told her the plan. Oh my God, yes. Oh, I see it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Those five nations, God's given them to her. She's an apostle to those nations. When the fire and the glory hits, she'll be on the plane. Those are her name. That's why I tell you what. You, you say, God has given me an apostolic calling. I tell you what, you better get on it. Otherwise, you'll give your nations to other people. Yeah. Better wake up. That's good. Better wake up. Better get your butt woken up. Better get hungry. Get, better get talking to the Holy Spirit. Better get full of God. Better get excited. Better wake up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello? It's okay. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the call. You can help us. Yeah. Now, here's another thing. How God has kept us these last 10 years is a miracle. You have had a part of it. Every one of you have been a part of this ministry. You have had a part of it. The Lord said to me, I'm about to raise a partner for this ministry. You cannot believe it. The Lord said to me, you'll never ever need money for not preaching in a church. Amen. And we never have. So I said, Lord, obeying you and telling the truth is going to make pastors mad at me until they sit down with you and they get into the truth from the Holy Spirit. I won't be about it. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I'd rather preach to 10, 15, 20 people are hungry for God. I'd rather preach to people that will drive four hours from Tennessee to be here in Atlanta, Georgia tonight. These are hungry people. Yeah. Or people drive three plus hours, whatever, from Huntsville, Alabama. They were not meeting two weeks ago in Huntsville, Alabama. These people. And Abby, you were there too, right? That sweet kid, love that kid. And these people came from Tennessee. Yeah. When I first came to America, I didn't understand this. They said, Tennessee? I said, yeah, Tennessee, I see on the TV, yeah. yeah. No, the state of Tennessee. <laughs> Did you know, by the way, that the state of that, that, you know, t Tennessee, Tennessee uh, uh, University? Did you know they don't have a football team? <laughs> they don't have. Did you know they don't have a football team? <laughs> they just call every Saturday when you, they're going to go have a, a, a away game. They call for people to go with. And then once they get there, they just ask for volunteers. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> They're the best team in college football. They're the only team that does not have an organized team. They just grab volunteers and they still win a lot of games. They're the best team ever. Just think what they would do if they got a, a franchise and get a proper football team. Like <laughs> oh, you have volunteers. Just volunteers. You can go play next next week. Just volunteers. I may go play one time. Buddy and I, we go play. Would you stand with me, please? <laughs> People, people, you got to get this stuff into your spirit. People, folks, friends, partners, you got to get this stuff into your spirit. The way I was screaming tonight, most of you should have been screaming running up and down this building. This stuff got to get in your spirit. You and Holy Spirit have got to spend some time together and ask him to pull this stuff into your spirit. If not, you're not going to be rendered on me. You're going to be run behind on me. The greatest... Oh my God. Sorry. 
People say, you know, it must be wonderful to be a prophet. It's sometimes awesome and great. Sometimes so frustrating to eat your teeth. Mm. You can help us. We're going to receive an offering tonight. Amen. And everybody watching, be a part of this. The time will come when you'll stand in line to give me money and I have millions and billions. I will. Because we're going to take this thing around the world. And I said, you know what? You can give, but you don't really need it. You know when an offering is the greatest offering, when the need is the greatest. Yeah. This is why people like you, some of the partners with me these years, you, you brought us, Sally and I, through the toughest years of our life. The last, you know, eight, nine, ten years. The reward would be the greatest for you. The time will come, many will stand in line and want to give 100,000. Makes no difference. Don't even help us, we don't need it. Now, I know this tonight, I'm going to say this publicly. There are people all over this country who know about us. And God has spoken to you in your spirit to send us a certain amount of money, and you haven't done so. What the hell is wrong with you? Hmm. And I did not play hands. I didn't come here to play church. I never played church. You have an opportunity to invest. Now, I'm going to say this, help me Lord to say this correctly. There is no ministry like this. We're not the best. We're not the greatest. There is no ministry like this. There is no ministry that is called to run ahead and prepare the remnant. That's a Amen. task that God has given us. Amen. That's why he's given me this book. Not because I'm smart and know something. No. That's part of the task. Is to prepare hungry people of God. Like I said, we're even raising up ministers. Some, some of it we do hands on. Some of it God's doing through this book. I've had people call me. They go, oh my God, oh my God. Did the Lord just show me this? And the Lord called me to this. And the Lord called me to this while I was reading the book. Yeah, because it's loaded. It's loaded. It's loaded with everything about your destiny. Amen. The golden glory revolution is your destiny. The golden glory revolution is your You ain't got no other destiny. Well, Amen. I read the book sometimes. Your destiny is in here. Yes. Your future is in here. Everything about your future is in here. Amen. That's why I didn't mind giving three years of my life, my wife and I, to get this to people. Now, let me say this. You have an opportunity to sow into this ministry. Be a partner, be sown into this ministry. And the time will come when we don't need, like I said, we don't need the money. This, the next maybe three, six, ten, twelve months, is the most important period in this ministry. We're going to start exploding. We're going to start getting the e-book the, 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 the e out. We're going to get the audio book out. We're going to get this book out internationally into other nations. And we're going to start running when we have the money and do our own crusades and cities. Get our own building. Hallelujah. Let pastors, everybody know. Contact 10,000 Christians. Move in. Have the meeting. Let the power of God fall. Amen. That's the next level we're going to go to. So I want to just say this to you tonight. We don't ever try and play with people's feelings and emotions, you know, you don't give, we, we can't sleep in the hotel tonight uh, because uh, we didn't pay the bill today, all this kind of big bullcrap. And I'm going to pray for you. I don't know what the time is. What is the time? 9.18. We have to be out here by 10. I'm going to pray for everybody. I'm going to pray. Anybody who wants it, everybody, we're going to pray. We'll move these chairs back, we're going to pray. Because you're going to go home home tonight with an anointing of God on you. And Holy Spirit is going to start talking to you. Some of the stuff and the junk that's hanging around your head. Holy Ghost, drive it out. Touch people tonight. Touch them, anoint them. Fire them up. The greatest hour. What? Do you want to say bye to them? No, we won't pray. I want everybody to be in on this. I'm going to pray. We're going to receive an offering. We're going to pray. Okay. So everybody there, you go to our website. Everything is there. On our website where it says give. You click on the button that says give. You can text to give. You can PayPal. You can send it by mail. So many ways to give. Hello. And then we're going to pray. When we receive the offering, we're going to pray. I want just a couple of you gentlemen to help me. If you want an envelope for your giving tonight, would you raise your hand, please? Just, just help me hand some of these out, would you, Father? Thank you.
Thank you. We'll do this. Just help me hand these out. Let me know if you need more. We got it. Glory to God. Now don't write out an offering every single We're going to do this thing the right way. If you have done, that's fine. But let, let's, let's do this the right way. Anybody still needs an envelope? Raise your hands. Please, we'll get them to you. Your life will not be the same again. There's a new anointing in the land. There's a new anointing. Hallelujah. That's on the ministry of the Lord. There's a new anointing that the Spirit of God is bringing. It's the anointing of preparing the remnant for the golden glory revolution. Now, does this, this, anybody else need an envelope? Raise your hand right now. Anybody else? Okay. Now let's pray. Don't, don't, don't do an offering yet. Let's pray. If you have this, fine. Let's do this. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray. We pray for every person. Obey God. Be part of this. Be part of what we do. The next 6 to 12 months are absolutely crucial. Help us raise the finances to go to the next level and get the stuff done. All I'm saying is obey your heart. Obey what God is leading you. Obey what He's prompting. We don't try to squeeze any money out of anybody that they're not supposed to give. We don't operate that way. We refer you to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you right, right now tonight. That you inspire people, that you talk to them, that you lead them, that you guide them, that you talk to them. Whatever they need to give, that you show them right now in the precious name of Jesus. In the building and every person watching this. This is a critical, very important moment. Just obey your heart. Obey God. Obey what He's putting in your heart in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray now for every person giving tonight. Or whenever people watch this broadcast, that you would speak to them. That you would encourage them and show them what you want them to do. That and nothing else. In Jesus' name. We thank you for your faithfulness, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your glory and your grace and your blessing and your honor that we're going to see in this land. We thank you for precious, precious, precious people like those people in this building, like those people watching this broadcast, precious people, hungry people. We're going to be hungrier and ready to be transformed by the fire and the glory. I thank you, Lord. I pray that you would lead them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, if you want to make up an offering, however you want to do it, now let me say this too. You can always go, hold on a second. You can always go to our website. Listen to me. Please go to our website. Everybody say website. Please go to the website. There's so much stuff on there for you to watch and receive. Gabriel Haymans Ministries.com. Gabriel G-A-B-R-I-E-L. Haymans. H-E-Y-M-A-N-S. Gabriel Haymans Ministries.com. You can give there. Any way you can. If you click on the button that says give all the options, everything. It's simple. I promise you this. I hate technicality and I hate detail and stuff that don't work. Our website is easy and simple. A, a child can operate it and a 63-year-old person like me can operate it. I know the children can do it. They can do all this stuff. But an older person like me can do it. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, we pray. We're going to pray. We pray for financial breakthroughs, blessings, miracles, signs and wonders. I pray that you would show your people how to follow you, Holy Spirit, in giving. No Old Testament stuff. No more. No Moses. No Abraham. Jesus. New Testament. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You show your people how to obey you. Because the blessing of an abundant return is only in obeying God. That's all this word is. Not in trying to squeeze money from people or threaten them. And God will not do this if you don't. No, 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 no. no. Just follow the Spirit of God. Because everything is done by love and in faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Everybody out there, participate. I tell you what. It will be the greatest miracle to me. Tomorrow, 5 o'clock, is our broadcast. It will be an awesome miracle. If thousands of people will watch. Sometimes we have up to a thousand. You say, how many people send offerings? One or two. The most precious things of God. I preach right now. The most precious things of God. On Facebook every Sunday. Sometimes six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand people watch. How many send offerings? About two or three. I'm not talking about a regular partners now. Hallelujah. You want to say something? No. All right. So, Lord, now I release an anointing to give. Now I release an anointing to receive. 
And I release the anointing of your spirit and your presence in Jesus' name. Get people out of their brain into the spirit. Help them to hear you in their spirit. It's not about our head and our brain. It's about our spirit led by Holy Spirit. Our spirit, born again spirit, led by Holy Spirit. Lord, I bless the gift. I bless the giver. Lord, I thank you that even in the next few months, you'll give us literally hundreds and hundreds of new partners. And we're going to take this ministry national in Jesus' name. And then international. Glory to God. And by that time, the fire God's everywhere. Praise God. Praise God. And the Lord's going to raise up people. Like this man over there standing. He's going to preach the gospel. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. And we'll say, my God. Really? Because the Spirit of God, as soon as the fire hits, the Spirit of God will call millions of people all over the world the moment the fire hits them. So why doesn't God call me now? The calling for this final generation is in the fire. Are you out there? Yeah. Let's go ahead and receive the offering in the precious name of Jesus. Those of you out there participate. As I said, go on our website, GabrielHaymansMinistries.com. Click on Give, and you'll see all the options. Very easy. Be part of this. Support. Stand with us. God will richly bless you. Aren't you glad God is not a failure? Come on. Tell the person next to you, God is not a failure. God's plans are not going to fail. God's timetable is not going to fail. Nothing about God's going to fail. Amen. Listen. Nothing about God's going to fail. Listen to me. Nothing about God's going to fail, including me. Are you hearing me? Nothing about God is going to fail. you part of God. Nothing about God's going to fail, including me. I'm ready to get my new fire, cleansed body, and my new glory infused body. Anybody who has not yet given, not been served, would you raise your hands? There's one person up here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody, would you stand, please? You know what I want everybody to do? If everybody can just help and we move all the chairs back. Move all the chairs back. Hallelujah. Oh, just oh. Yeah, you, Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. We're going to pray. How many of you live here in the greater Atlanta area? I'm sitting, I want you to come here. Um, Debbie, just come here a minute. Just stand by. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Let's get Tennessee in here. Come on. Amy, come on. Let's come stand over here. Get your hands together. We're going to pray. Glory be to God. Just breathe. We are laying claim.
to every state in this nation for God, the fire, and the glory. We're starting right here tonight in Atlanta. We're starting right here in the state of Georgia. We reach out right now to Tennessee, Alabama. We include everybody. We got some fire starters here. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Miss Donna, come up here. Come join me, will you? Come up here. Stand right here. Praise God. Just breathe. Come on, Tiffany. Come stand over here, too. We need you here. Just breathe. Everybody stretch your hands to them and say, Lord, have your way. Thank you. We claim this city. We claim these states. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the moving of your spirit. Yes, Lord. Thank Just breathe. Thank you, Lord. You're full of Atlanta. Thank You're full of the state of Georgia. Yes. state of Tennessee. state of Alabama. And everyone else. All of them. We claim them all in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. I release the spirit of God. I release the presence of God. I release the anointing of God. I release the fire of God right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Fill them up, Lord. I release your spirit. Yeah. The death, the destruction that you've gone through. I curse everything Hallelujah. you've gone through that's hurt you, that's discouraged you, that's knocked you down, to be put out of you. Come yes. out of you by the Spirit of God. Yes. Come out of you right now by the Spirit of God. Jesus. Come out of you right now by the Spirit of God. Yes. You are free. You are healed. You are whole. Let's I curse go. everything the devil has done against you. I pray it off you tonight. I use my authority in Jesus' name as a child of God. I use my authority as a minister. And I use my authority as a leader in the church. Yes. I break everything that's had a hold over you. Don't care what it is. Glory. It's a cigarette. It's Hallelujah. A kitchen, if it's pain. If it's hurt. Whatever it is. Yes. I break the power of it. Get the hell of God's people, devil. Let go. Hallelujah. Set you free. In Jesus' name, the power of God, I set you free. Set you free. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. 
Yes. Nice God. Abby, come on. Stand. Yes. Come, come with us today. Stand right there. We'll pray. Come on. You like this? Like it. Take his hand. Just we'll pray, okay? Take his hand. Just we'll pray. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on in. Stand right in. Here. Come on. A little bit forward. A little bit forward. That's right. Not be the same again. Neither. Just breathe. Just breathe. This is all by my, by my spirit. Yeah, just breathe. Don't even pray. Just breathe it on me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. You're precious to God. He's healing you. He's restoring you. And he's raising you back up. Your turn. Ha, ha, ha. And a new day before you. Ha, ha, ha. It's a new day. Oh, no. This starts tonight. The real outpouring of the fire, that, that still comes, of course. But there's a fire that starts tonight. There's a healing that starts tonight. There's a restoration that starts tonight. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. It's okay. Just pull it out. It's all right. Just pull Glory it out. Glory, Lord. You're fine. Just pull it out. It's fine. Look up. Glory, Lord. I release the Spirit of God. Release the Spirit of God to you. Feel in Jesus' name. Yeah, just stop, stop breathing. Just breathe. Don't worry about anything else. In Jesus' name. Release even the mantle of the Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Here. Yes, here. Oh, yeah. Just breathe. Don't pray. Just breathe. Yeah, there it is. That is. That is. That is. That is. Right there in Jesus' name. Right there in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. Just breathe. Just breathe. Just no, no, just breathe. Just breathe. Just, just breathe. Yeah, just breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. Thank you, Lord. God, such a beautiful call in your life. I want to praise you last time. I'm so sorry you didn't come. Couldn't uh, didn't come to the hotel with us. But you know God will make it up next time we all visit together. In Jesus' name. Fire! Just take right there. Flow. Take a deep breath and flow right to flow right to you. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> flow right to you. Flow right to you. Not so bad at this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Begin to burn. Fire. Jesus. Fire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Fire! Yes, Lord. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Thank you, Lord. That time we see the power of God back in the church. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you for helping us. She is so precious. Thank you. My God, how precious. Thank you. Yes, it's so maratisu. so and in your family, I'm telling you right now, your family is coming a whole morning for your new whole family. Your whole family. Fire in Jesus' name. Your whole family. Burning out every crap. Burning out everything out of the devil. And the gods can take over. God's taken over. God's taken over. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to burn. I'm going all the junk out. Somebody yes, say, Lord. God will arise. Yes, Lord. Oh, listen. The true power. Thank you for coming to the meeting tonight. Glad to have you here. Praise God. You know, I'm so glad you're here. And if anybody gets mad and want to hit me, please, you can help me. Praise God. This, this big, strong man, hallelujah, he can defend me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I want to pray for you. No time is slipping away. You want to step up here? Just want to pray over you and your family. Just come up here. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to get hit tonight. Some of you are going to get hit tomorrow. Some of you are going to get hit next week. Yes. Just let me in my hand and you pray. Yes. Praise God. And you're up here. Just stand close together. Grab the hand of the person next to you. Now, when I pray for you, please do not pray. Just let me pray. Just breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. Let, let, the, let the Spirit of God just flow. Just breathe. Just breathe. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Healing in your body. Somebody's just healed of sugar diabetes. Come on. Glory to God. It's Come gone. On. It's gone. It's gone. You're going to test your blood and stuff Glory. later. It's going to be normal. Glory. It's going to be normal. Eating disorders. I curse eating disorders. To hell with you. It's okay. Just stay there. Just, just drink. There's healing flowing through your body, my sister. 
Oh God, there's healing flowing through your body. Oh, you never be the same again. Tonight, to turn around for you. A new fire is beginning to burn in your spirit tonight. And it's going to burn to the whole family. You are going to, I'm going to tell you right now what the Lord's saying to me. You are going to set your whole family on fire. You. Not mama. The Lord's got other work for her. You. He's going to use you. He's going to use you. You're going to be so bold. You're going to be so burning with the fire of God. You are going to set your whole family on fire and turn them around with the power of God and straighten them out. Get all the crap knocked out of it and get this family in God, in anointing, ready to serve God. You. He's going to use you. Won't be any effort. Nothing. Nothing. God to show you what to do, when to do, and you don't do anything else. Just because <laughs> by the power, fire of God. Oh, fire of God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, get on. Where's my cloak? Praise God. Help me out, I'm going to pray for my friend. My cloak? No, 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 show me quickly. Let's close your eyes. Let's close your eyes, I'm going to pray over here. Turn this way so you don't fall on your wife, you do. Praise God. No, you're okay, you're fine, you're fine. Everybody say praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Fire. Jesus, now you have a right through you. Just, just breathe. Just breathe, man. Fire! Right there. Just breathe it. Just breathe it. Breathe it. Look at me. Look at me. I want to get this in your spirit. You're finding it. Because your head gets numb. Don't do anything. Just relax. You see, if our head can get the anointing in us, every Christian will have an anointing. It's in the Lord's doing it. I'm just in the channel. But He wants to pour some fresh anointing in your spirit. So don't pray. Don't talk. Don't, because that's all the crap the church taught you to do. It's all a bunch of bull crap. That's why it blocks the anointing. Yeah. It blocks the anointing. You just stand still and relax and breathe. He's off the spirit. You don't have to breathe like you're going to die. <laughs> just, just, gently, just gently breathe. Because I lay my hands and it pops off you. See, this is another thing the church has never taught the church. The church has never taught God's people how to receive the anointing. Of course, the church does nothing about the anointing. Or Holy Spirit. Put your hands on the anointing. Have to pray. Just breathe like I know we only have one night tonight. Sometimes you need a week to break people through. I know from, from the days of the, of the Jordan Island. Some places like a week, sometimes two weeks later, people start getting breaking through. Break. <laughs> yeah, just burn inside. Lord, your God, right there. Yes, yeah, all over you. Fire! Jesus, my dear. Lord. But here's the thing. Whether you receive tonight or not, you will. Because I'm laying my hand at you as a sign of the token of God's hand. You'll be driving down the road, you'll get drunk in the car. You'll be driving down the road, you sit in front of the TV, and the power of God's going to fall on you. In Jesus' name. Fire and glory. Right now. Just breathe. Bless the Lord. Just, yeah, just, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's more. Yeah, just breathe. Just breathe. How are you doing, sir? You okay? He's so hungry. There's so many people. Fire in Jesus' name. Lord, let your morning, your presence flow right through this man. Thank you for this man. Fire in Jesus' name. Right through. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a new joy welling up on the inside of you. And roll out these next few weeks, starting even tonight. Just breathe. Just breathe. Oh. 
Talk to your wife about it. Huh? You know? I don't know all about it. I said, Holy God, I saw the I saw the man, I saw the presence of the Lord come. Join his hands, you guys are together. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you as a couple together. And the Lord is going to start. I know the Lord is showing you some things and has done some things in you, but he's really going to start visiting really strong in your home. And this time is going to stuff that happened with your wife too. The Lord's going to do, okay? And, and he's going to make a way. He said, Well, there'll never be a way because of finances. Oh the hell with that. Excuse me, you don't know my God. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. One day, you can still say to your wife, I cannot naturally see how we ever have the money to obey God and just pay off everything to God. The next day you'll have the money in your hands. Now that might take a year, might take two years, but I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming. And the Lord will do things in her heart and raise up even a ministry in her. That'll shock you. That'll be the big shock for you. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's going to be the biggest shock for you, even bigger than the finances. And she'll walk around the house and say, I don't know what's happened to me, but this is like, this is from heaven. Come on, Lord. This is from heaven. I would not believe it if it didn't happen to me. And she'll go tell people that shake their heads. We know you. This is God. You're real. This is, the, you, your personal integrity. We believe you. Father, we pray for your presence for this precious couple. You brought them in here tonight by your spirit. The fire your anointing. Continue to deal with this man and his wife in the favor of the Lord. I will continue to deal with you in the favor of the Lord. I'll continue to deal with you Fire! in the favor of the Lord. I'll continue to deal with you in the favor of the Lord. I'll continue to deal with you in the favor of the Lord. I'll continue to deal with you in the favor of the Lord. Praise God. Anybody that I have not prayed for? Now, I know it's a one-night meeting. Praise God. Come, come back over here, lady. Let's come. Let me help you. You're, you're, you're right there. You're right there. But you see, you've been a victim of the church world as much as everybody. Don't raise your hands. You know, in the old days of Pentecost, we used to say, raise your hands higher. God will bless you better. Shout louder. God will raise you. That's what was hard was. The anointing comes. Not if, if raising that higher, let's get you on the water tower of the city. If shouting louder, let's get you the biggest sound system in town, screaming. It's just hopeless. But even if you're by yourself in your house or in your bed at night, just say, Lord, fill me. And just stop breathing. Just a gentle breath. Holy Spirit, move on. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, anoint me. Don't perform. All that performance bullcrap the church has taught us is hard. Well, I'm gonna, and, and people pray harder than I can pray. It's like, I want to tell you a story, but you talk louder than me. How, how can you get the story? You see, it's to learn to receive, and you'll become more and more sensitive to Holy Spirit. If you keep on doing that. Sometimes when you have fellowship with him, put on some soft worship music, lay back there. Just drink the Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, come touch me. Let me feel you. Let me hear you. Let me experience you. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, let's start having some special moments and let's have a special relationship come down this. Because you're right so close, you're right on the edge. You're right on the edge. But it's not work. It's not pushing with your mind. It's not trying to pull. It's not trying to make it happen. It's just It's not falling, it's not standing up. It's just relax. Put your hand on belly again now. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, this is. I can breathe. Holy Spirit, listen to in Jesus. Your presence. In your glory, in Jesus.
Anybody close you on us? Take a deep breath. and difficulties in making mistakes. I've made more mistakes than anybody else. I've been this 37 years. I hold the record for a number of mistakes. But I tell you what, I also hold the record for cutting off and removing every evil thing from me. Hallelujah. And sometimes it comes through other people and mm. always comes through church people. Mm. What does this say? The calling of God in your life tonight it's as strong as ever. Yeah, you want to you want. It's as strong as ever before. You see, the devil had to try to break you. He tried some stuff with me too. I went through some stuff too. I can't talk about tonight. Because he tried to break you. So he can destroy you. So he can destroy your calling. But you know what? The hell was him. And I see, I see, I see. You, you, it's almost like you come out of a dark pit. And you'll see more and more light. You're almost out. You're not close to me out. Hallelujah. You're almost there to where you can grab the side of this pit. I mean, you're almost out. And soon you'll be completely out. And you see, here's the thing. Right now, you may not see what the Lord has for you. But you're about to surface. And as soon as you surface properly, above the ground, you look around and see a whole lot of things. God says, yeah, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. Now we'll do a start here, we know we go there, we go there. And the same thing happens. See, when you're in the darkest pit of the place of death and destruction, you can't see what God has for you, and that's okay. Because you're not supposed to go after those things. Even if you could see them, you've got to get out of this attack and death. And you're right on the edge to step out completely. And then you'll see the things of God. They'll be so clear and simple. In actual fact, they'll start falling into your hands. Because, you see, here's how God makes the devil pay. What the devil tries to steal from you by holding you over many years. When God brings that final deliverance, he restores those things rapidly because you're behind schedule. Hmm. That's what's going to happen. And the Lord is going to restore you and you will have a ministry, not just where you are. You're going to have, you, I don't know how this works, but you're going to have a ministry throughout the state. You'll touch the whole state. I don't know how. Hallelujah. I don't know. But you'll have a ministry that will touch maybe be satellite churches. I don't know. Because I do know this now. Now I know it. That there's an apostolic calling on you. I just see it now. So that's what it's going to be. And it won't be all churches that you would start. Anointed men of God will come and say, I just need to be a part of what you're doing. I want to. God wants me to. God told me. I have a little church over here. I want to bring it under your covering and support. Or I just started out here. Just have five people. I just want you to know I submit to your ministry. That's what God has for you. It'll be a spiritual thing. I just come to mind. You see, especially apostolic ministry, the devil's going to start that. Because apostolic ministry, the other name for apostolic ministry is multiplicational ministry. And that's what God's doing. And I agree with you tonight. And your wife. You will never, ever revisit these days. I will even re I will remove them from your soul and the pain, and I will remove them even from your memory. Hallelujah. And then my fire and my glory will come, and everything will be a new beginning. From the kids, to your wife, to you, to the ministry. It will be a complete rebirth of God. You're not far from it. Just continue to stand strong. You're close. You're close. You're close. Hallelujah. You're close. And then I'm going to visit you. Okay, I don't know what all this means, but he says I'm going to visit you in an apostolic fashion. And I will give you a new assignment. And the day will come when people will say, What? 
Tim and Donna Saban. They have ministries all over Georgia. How? And they'll call me and say, who are you, man? I said, I'm the God that obeys God. So is my wife. We're the, we're the couple who obeys God. Because he builds the house. And he's going to build the house for you. I don't know how far it's going to go. I know it'll cover the state. That I can bet you on. If your ministry will cover, oh, there's the word. It'll saturate the state of Georgia. After that, I don't know. It's not my business. I don't have to know. But I know that's far. We know in part, we prophesy in part. So that's the part I can tell you. The next part after that, I don't know yet. But this is a pretty good big start tonight. God will raise you up, sir. God will raise you up in your wife. And he'll make the devil eat. Everything he's done to you, he'll turn it backwards and shove it down his throat. And he'll vomit for weeks in hell. Glory to God. And so, I just lay my hand on you and I say in the name of Jesus. Son, servant, and leader of God. You and your wife. Arise! Hallelujah. Arise! Yeah. I pray for every person watching, whenever you watch this. I'm telling you, God knows. I'm telling you, Jesus loves you and died for you. If you've never given your heart to him, do it now. Do it now. Join us. Receive his salvation. Oh God, receive his salvation. If you're a child of God, just say, Holy Spirit, fill me with hunger and then fill me with you. Fill me with hunger and fill me with you. Fill me with hunger and fill me with you. Fill me with hunger and fill me with you. Me with me with you. In Jesus. Praise God. Okay. Now. Watch our broadcast every Sunday, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. People, it's awesome. It's free. Watch it on Facebook. Hallelujah. Call us. Write us an email. If you need help, we'll help whatever we can. In Jesus' name, we bless you. I'm going to let you go. We're going to pray for some more people here, but we'll let you go. In Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We love you. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Au revoir.